Right, good morning, guys. Out of the roll, nice and keen this morning. Pre lurking for an hour before the stream starts. Much appreciated. Um, right, then, guys. So um, yesterday, obviously, I finished the assassin. Um, before we start, I just want to show you a couple of little. Still needs a little bit of clean up on the uh, thing, but we got a. Uh, the ogre is complete. We'll finish there. Uh, I've got a whole tissue paper full of freshly cleaned miniatures that just need to go into the curing. So I'll be getting them on um, the curer today and I'll be taking some photos later. Uh, and the job for today now is just carry on with these guys and make sure we've got um, a complete warband with two crossbowmen. So I'm just going to get stuck straight in. Um, I'm going to come back to these couple first. So these are the original. Um, so I'll just keep my glare out my eyes a touch. I want to modify this guy and turn him into an archer. It'll be easy to do this guy. <clears throat> Actually, no, I was going to take the base mesh bloke, uh, which is this sculpt, I think. <clears throat> so we'll do a merge visible. Get myself this guy again. We're going to take the ruler out <coughs> I'm gonna hide that. Right next thing I need to do I need to grab a crossbow so I'm gonna bring in one I've already made from the previous model. Import from my component library. Crossbow. I'm going to modify this crossbow a touch. This is the crossbow that the um, what then? What are they called? The mercenaries. This is the mercenaries crossbow. So I'm going to modify it a touch. Uh, mostly here, I think. I just want to make sure this has got a nice curve to it, so it's got that Saracen feel. <coughs> so um, the Z. Symmetry. Ah, Mr. Snow, how are you doing? Thank you for the lurking, mate. Hope you're doing well tonight. <laughs> I'm just going to put the um, there we go add a curve to it, I don't know why that's just changed colour let's auto group it back this here, I'm going to thin the body out um, on this one, remove the guard, uh, group this, Bump the res, dynamo ship. I 
can isolate that bottom piece I don't want and delete it okay now for this piece now I'm just going to uh, round off these edges just because I want it to be more wooden looking than the previous one I don't know if you know with the crossbow you tend to find the um, the back of the crossbow here it's kind of just leading in as a, a stick almost so I'm probably going to do that on this one just um, just take it to a taper I'll put in trying to save that trigger. I just killed it anyway. So I'm going to add another trigger back in. We've got. Um, there we go. It's unnecessary. We'll delete that. We'll keep this bit here because it's the <coughs> it's the little foot pedal thing. Not foot pedal, but the, the foot stand so you can yank the bow up. You can get proper tension on the uh, loading mechanism. I'm going to leave the pin, I'm going to leave the cable, I'm going to leave the rail. <coughs> uh, now, this bit, this bit I'm going to do something with, but I don't know what. Right, so I'm just going to drop um, a little bit of clay into these holes to fill them rather than uh, trying to smooth them out or anything. Just polish the surface and such. Okay, now I want to give this uh, a bit of a Saracen vibe. So we've got the curly bit there. I've got the. <coughs> I'm going to strength. I'm going to lengthen these. Handle out here. Oh, not that much. I'm lengthen it a touch. And I think I might just 
No, the veterans they have heavy crossbows, so I'd better leave it quite chunky. Gotta put a winder on. Let me just grab a reference for a crank handle crossbow. Quite an intense design. So I'm looking at this one at the moment. This one feels quite fitting. This was the original one I was looking at, the uh, wind up job. It's a little bit too meaty, I think. <clears throat> Do a little search for Saracen crossbow, see what we're dealing with. Okay, so these guys in the models, um, again, if people are doing historical miniatures, I assume they've done the reference, uh, the research a little bit. So you can see this one's got a little uh, knock in the top there, so I'll, I'll add that to this crossbow just to make it a little bit better. This one here, we've got the same thing again. Don't know, has anybody got any ideas? <coughs> what we think. Um, okay. I mean, that's not a million miles off, I don't think. This is what I was thinking with the kind of shape here, where it tapers up to the back. I mean, it might just go proper simple and just do something like that. It doesn't even need to be historically accurate, it just needs to be thematic, so it's got to look, look the part. I'm going to go for this, this shape here, I'm going to use that as a reference. We'll go for something along those kind of lines. So again, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Martin, Tracy, thank you for liking. Having a lovely morning. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to do a little bit of reprofile. So I'm just going to mask off the top because the top is kind of where I need to be. So let's just flatten that out all the way down there. So I'm going to uh, bring the front down a good bit. I'll take this top bit off, hadn't I? Let's bring that down a touch, like that. When we thin it out, we'll take a chunk here. We'll bring that down as well. And then we're going to shrink that. And then we'll take the very, very tail and we'll put a chunk in the tail as well. <coughs> okay, so that's not quite right, but <coughs> we are getting there. So group that dynamo ship. Take my polishing tools. Tooler. Uh, dynamic tessellation is off. I'm just going to come through and just going to polish all the way down. 
clean up the outsides. I'm going to get to the underside here. I'm just going to add a little bit of contouring. Those various attempts I had to try to smooth out the uh, mesh failed. Forgot to actually turn Dynamesh on. You know, having the actual tool you're trying to use activated in the first place is always a good place to start, I feel. And here I was going to taper that out too. Let's give it a smooth blending. reason we're going for this design is a lot of the Saracen type stuff, it's got lots of curves to it, lots of curves in the designs. So this one jumped out at me as a contender. Okay, so let me just get that back again, let's just let's blend this edge out. Later, morning, morning. How you doing? Hope you're keeping well. <coughs> you and me both, mate. You and me both. Properly on a deadline today as well because this is like the last day of November uh, and these models are supposed to be delivered in November. So I need to get these wrapped up, rolled out, and out to everybody today. So mega pressure. What games you play, mate? Is it a bit of DD or you uh, got some rosters and army lists you got to build? It's been a long time since I've done a bit of that. So long. <laughs> oh, nice. Have you uh, visited the lowlands in this one? Nostalgia trip then. Well, that was a fail.
you know what, I can delete that piece. <coughs> ah, right, got ya. Very nice, very nice. <coughs> I did a um I did a set a while back for the uh the low light tavern. Which is my version of the low lantern from um the well it cops up in a descent into a Vernus campaign, but obviously it's in, situated in Baldur's Gate. Um <coughs> so it's a a ruined pirate ship come tavern. Um Pull up a few of the pics for the characters I did for it. See if you like them. Because one of them's a. Uh, there we go, there's a couple of the bouncers I did for the uh, group. And then we've got. Um, I don't know if she's in here actually, but. Her name's the Captain, the Captain Liara Thunder Rift, I think her name is. Well, that's my version of her. Um, Uh, ex pirate mage captain with a little blue crab familiar set on the shoulder. Nice, what's your skeleton up to? Got a few of my own. Ignore this chap at the front with the obscene chopper. <laughs> ah, nice. So you do all these in um, in Hero Forge, and do you to get the the character portraits ready? <clears throat> yeah, I did a Hero Forge character recently for a for a mate of mine who was playing a D and D campaign. It was his birthday, so I was surprising him with a miniature of his own. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't have time to actually sculpt him one, so I went Hero Forge for it. And uh, I made him his character, and he died on the next campaign. Typical. <laughs> I'm going to delete that bit. And on this piece, I'm going to just feather that back. Nice. Lots of tentacles and uh, seaweed and that eye. Sounds impressive. Oh, I read that as hair made of gold to start with. <laughs> I didn't spot the comma, sorry. So you playing on stream or anything or are you just uh is it just a, a game with mates sat around a table? A good old style. Curve, man. I'll uh, have a little check.
Let's get a little bolt play on the side of this. End off and stretch that out so it actually fits. <coughs> yeah, I've, I think I've done quite well with Twitch so far, actually making sure all my stuff actually gets retained. <clears throat> um, I was initially a little bit concerned that it would all be just lost in the ether, but all the stuff I've done seems to be kind of still lingering about. Like all my old videos are on my channel, but they're also like, I've, I've fired them up onto YouTube as well. And it's been, uh, it's been pretty decent to be fair. Yeah, yeah, fire the link up, man. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll check it out. Let me just uh, grab that and I'll give you a follow. Cheers, dude. Um, saying dude here, like I know you're, you're a bloke, but. See, <coughs> so we'll check out your, your Twitch stream. Ah, oh, it's UK, so uh, GMT. I think it's GMT, not BST. It's, it's, yes, yeah, it's GMT now. We clocks gone back. So even if the time zone's out, I can still catch it up on a on a catch up anyway. So, yep, that's right. Ten twenty seven a.m. here. Do a little wrap around on the handles on this one. One AM. I'll, I'll be honest. I'm not usually good for anything at about one AM. Um, two little kids. They run us ragged. So if I happen to be up at one AM, I will tune in. <laughs> I am sometimes up and about, but... So more often than not, by that point, I'm either comatose in bed or... asleep on the sofa. Having tried to watch something on telly and failed. <laughs> and it just means you keep good friends. <laughs> oh, I should have put dynamic tessellation on for this bit. You know, it was lovely and warm when I got into this office today, and it seems to have just gone colder and colder and colder since I've been sat here. And I don't know if it's just because I'm now sat down and 
I'm feeling the cold because I'm sat down, but God, it's nippy, man. It's going much more heated up a touch. I've got a few prints running at the moment as well, so. <laughs> NC, my American geography is awful, mate. What's what's NC? North, North Coast? No. North Carolina. Of course. So, so you you guys love bounding around your. Uh, your acronyms for your hometowns and home states and it, it makes my brain have to really kind of like tick to try and keep up and like figure out where everyone's at <laughs> but most, often, most often or not people just kind of pop up and start chatting to you they don't really tell you where they're from so we'll just assume they're local and they're Male for the most part. <laughs> you know it's going to be a scandal to you now. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know what a Mount Olive pickle is. It's not something I've ever encountered in my uh, culinary adventures. Sounds like something we'd get in Glasgow here. Yeah? Except it'd be deep fried in batter. <coughs> so we haven't got anything like that. The, the 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 thing I've <coughs> the thing that's nearest to me when I where I was growing up, we had the um the Cadbury's chocolate factory. And that was um, that was about 15 minutes away from where I lived. <clears throat> so, whenever you got into the area, you just had this like this thick, lingering smell of chocolate in the air. Um, and then another place near me, there's a I can't remember if it's they make marmite or if they're brewing. If it's a brewery or they make marmite. I think it was marmite. I think it's a marmite factory. Um, and again, the smell of that was just like thick in the air. So, <laughs> so we don't really, we don't really have any of that kind of stuff over here. The, the place, well, not the place where I'm from, but like. I come from um, from Birmingham in the UK, and when you tell people you're from Birmingham, a lot of people go, "Oh, Birmingham!" Like in a really dopey dopey accent. <laughs> Nothing, Dan. You mean morning, Rich? <laughs> yeah. So I say you tell people you're from Birmingham, they they instantly drop into this like this dopey accent, which is like it's it's from the black country. We call it the black country because it's just sooty and tarry and everything. That's where all like the industry stuff was, the industrial stuff. So, oops, let's, uh, let's do that properly. <laughs> Is the pup keeping you up or uh, are you just lagging, mate? See, I'm just working on crossbows at the moment, so. Oh, check this out, dude. Are 
it's printed. Oh, nice, mate. It's what you always need, isn't it? Is that the chainmail's come out cracking on this, by the way? I think I did the donuts a bit bigger on the one sleeve, but I'll live with it. It looks really good. He's, I've scaled him smaller than my other ogres, actually. So, like, if you look at the Kingdom of Talarius ogre versus versus this guy, you can see he's like smaller. But I think I prefer this scale. So I might even scale down the Talarius ogres a touch just to kind of like to fit in. So we've got him on the um, we got like the the leader. I need to get a few pictures of them on the um, on the uh, Discord today. So I've got to get these. Uh, they've all been they've all been printed and uh, cleaned. I just need to do the final bit of curing on them now. Cure them, prime them, and get them on my uh, painting desk. Oh yeah, man. It, yes. Uh, have you? Are you on my Discord channel, mate? Are you on our Discord server? Do you know what? Let me just grab my phone because I've left it over by the printer. I'm on about a dozen servers and it keeps my like my phone busy. I've had to mute most of them. Right, let's just uh let's try and get an early pick of this guy for you. I tell you, I love it when the models just stand up on their own. You know, when you've you've got the balance, the, ba the models like perfectly balanced. I mean, sometimes they're not, but <clears throat> right. Let's pull the uh, the Discord server a second. Welcome, Doctor. Yeah, a couple of these are a bit unbalanced, but the uh, the ogre stands up nice. Let's just line a few of these guys up on the table, and I'll just take a couple of quick snaps, post it into the group. So these are going in pre-clean up. These are so they haven't been. I haven't. I haven't done a, any anything other than just whip the supports off. Third, give us it. That is a shocking photo. From there, can I? I'm going to do it from the phone. So give me a second, dude. Uh... Well, I was going to throw it in the general chat.
Now the photo of the uh, of the ogre, the photos of the ogre, they're all pretty good. God, what are you doing up at five? Oh no, I know what you're doing up at five. Um, you're prepping for your games the weekend, aren't you? <laughs> Uh, you can post um, if you post it in the uh, Discord um, if you can. I've just posted some photos up in there on the general channel. You can go and pop them in there if you want. Um, yeah, general seems the most uh, most obvious one. Uh, we've also got a community streaming channel on there. So when you stream your um, your D and D session. If you want to pop the link into there, so other people can kind of like drop in if they're in, if they're about. So there's a, is it a couple of hundred people in the server. Can't see now. We've got 36 online at the moment, and then 122 offline. So yeah, 150 odd people. So oh, you can advertise as much as you want. Just pop it up. It's fine. There's a self promotions uh, page on there as well if you want to kind of um, pimp your stuff out. <laughs> I'm gonna get back to the uh, back to this crossbow. Let's get a little um, thing up the side, a little side plate. Did, didn't it? It's come out really well. Well pleased with that. <laughs> hey, you're not the only one with a dysfunctional stream. Mine's, mine was chaotic. I was the other day. I was streaming for uh, something like twelve minutes or something like that before anybody actually told me there was no sound on, uh, and I forgot to turn my microphone on. Well, actually, sorry, I hadn't forgotten to turn my microphone on. I had a technical fail, and for some reason, my microphone registered as a different microphone, which doesn't exist. Go figure. So yeah, I'm I'm a. Uh, you can you have my sympathies as far as uh, stream files go. <laughs> I can empathise with you all the way. Let's check it. Oh, nice. Yeah, I see what you're saying about the. Uh, oh, it actually is gold hair. <clears throat> so you borrowed a hairbrush off, off King Midas, did he, and uh, ended up with gold head. I like the ore with the, uh, like the flames flicking off the end as well. And the rifleman guy, is that is that like a before and after of him, is it? <clears throat> Oh, it's not, it's just, they're, just, they're just similar. Oops. Let's see that. Oh, just a quick question, guys. Can you hear the, the 3D printer going in the background? Can you hear that kind of like that whir and the fan going? Because to me, it sounds like a jet engine. I don't know how much he's going to kind of come through. Is it obnoxious or is it alright? So I've got them both going. They're pretty much as loud as they're ever going to get. But I need to know if I can regularly run prints while I'm streaming or if I need to wait until I'm off. Awesome. Yeah, because there's the... Um, as the uh, the web orders and stuff start picking up, 
I'm expecting obviously to have to do more more printing. So Doctor, is this a, is this like a custom world you've done, is it or is it like your own your own creation here or are you dealing with something that's like pre existing that you've kind of adopted? <clears throat> See, I, I designed like an entire world, but I never did it for like a D and D, and D thing. It was always my intention; it was going to be my own, my own kind of like game setting, if you like. Let's mirror this to the other side. Ah, oh, your balls. Why didn't that work? <coughs> uh, yeah, it's always good to ask, isn't it? You know, I don't want to assume people are comfortable with it. Not everyone likes being on, on camera, let alone on a stream live. Oh, nice. What's the game? So, so, we want it at the back, really. So what's the concept? Is it? Is, are you talking? Uh, oh god, what we call it? Are you talking about like a skirmish type game or a war game, or are you talking role play or?
<laughs> oh, so it's like a D and D campaign, you run uh, a campaign game kind of thing. So when you said you're doing your own game, I thought you meant you were like designing your own like game, like something you were going to like try and commercially release or something. If you put all that effort into doing a world, you know, it's worth considering. Division on there. Let's give that a rotate. Sounds like Britain a hundred years ago. Apart from the heavily armed trains. We may have had dwarves, I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's just smooth this out. Yeah, that's standard. Yeah. Right, to be expected, of course. Yeah. <laughs> oh, speaking of dwarfs, we know what's on telly tonight. I will definitely be watching Willow. I'm going to put a little stop block on here, um, but mostly just to make sure that that trigger is supported um, and anchored to the model. Doctor, I have to say, it all sounds rather grim, but it sounds like a cool environment to uh, pick up an adventure. Oh, they are, are they? Ho, ho, ho. Might end my stream early and uh, spend the afternoon binge watching then. Oh, screw you lot. <laughs> got Willow to watch. <laughs> Nah, I can't. I've got work to do first. I'll treat. I'll reward myself with the. Uh, what's called it with Willow later. I like the sound of chimney sweep, Matthew. By the way, that sounds cool. See, pull that. That's gonna go down. Let's go. Not sure, it will, but. <laughs> oh, just stuffing bodies up chimneys, are they? Is that?
rich. I'm tempted by that. Are you even allowed to do that? I'd have to watch it and not show you my screen, wouldn't I? You'd have to be watching me reacting to it or something like that. I'm, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be get away with streaming Disney Plus. Just this because I've adjusted where the uh, where the arms are. What's well, so now? We've got a new crossbow, which is different to the the one the other guys use. Ouch! Yeah, yeah. I better not do that. Who's he doing? What's he doing? How's that bit? Well, let's save that out. This is this is uh, going into the components library as a crossbow. <laughs> Are we talking about your game here, or is this what Disney will do? Mickey Mouse, Mickey, Mickey Mouse is a psychopath. Have you ever watched Steamboat Willie? They, they, they took a psychotic character and basically turned it into some kind of like, like they re, you know, they did a big publicity exercise on him and turned him into like their figurehead. If you watch Steamboat Willie, you kind of go, oh my god, you know, this like. He's swinging cats around and throwing them into frying pans and stuff like that. He's like playing music in a goat's mouth. It's, it's just the whole thing's just bizarre. <laughs> right, let's get this dude on. So we're gonna I'm gonna lose the spiky shoulder pads on him. Lose the hat. <laughs> we'll lose the. Uh, oops, no, I don't want to lose the arms. We'll lose the bracer on this guy. Might do like a bandage wrap around his hand. Um, and. I'll leave the knee pad on actually, let's we'll do that, I'm just going to mirror him. So I'm going to take the sash, I'm going to take this belt, yeah you get your head down doctor, thank you for joining me this morning, I hope your game plays that well. I say, if you get to stream it, I will uh, have a look and see if we can catch it up on the, um, the kind of the after stream. Ah, crisp, just one. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, I've got my coffee machine right here in arm's reach, and I will be brewing up a coffee in a minute just to keep me going. <laughs> Right, Doctor, you take it easy, get your head down, and uh, wish you well for the uh, for the next stream, mate. You take it easy.
Thanks again. Well, it's going to mask that off. I'm going to invert my mask and I'm going to mirror everything. Did that happen? How have I mirrored one spike and not the other? I'm a mystery to myself at times. So yeah. <coughs> right, what pose are we going for this guy then? So I need two crossbowmen. My instinct is to go for one standing up and one like kneeling and shooting. So what do we think? Do we like that idea or do I do both standing maybe? Or maybe I do one loading the bow, loading the crossbow. Nah, loading's. If I'm doing more of them, I might do one loading, but if I'm only doing two, they need to be action guys, don't they? Uh, let's add the crossbow into this scene, I'm going to duplicate him. What's perfect, sorry Rich, one standing, one kneeling, yeah? So it'll be into the armpit and then out a little bit, so I'm going to go for kind of there, I think, for the shooty pose, for the shooty angle. So I'm going to do the I'm going to do the arms first that are in a shooting position, and then what I'll do is I will lower one of them down, so that the arms will be up in a shooting pose like that, and I'm going to lower it down so it's like that on this standing one, and the kneely guy will be the one with the crossbow loaded, and what I'll do is I'll modify the individual guy afterwards. So I'm literally just going to do the arms right now. I wonder actually, you know, let me just let me just save this and make sure I don't crash it. <coughs> Bring a coffee up while I'm doing this. So I empty my coffee machine first. I'm gonna import my um My file for the crossbowman from the uh, mercenaries. So if I go load tools from projects. I'm going to have to delete a load of stuff out of this because this file is going to come in heavy. Um, so it was bad enough when I loaded in my ogres. Uh, Behemoth ogres when I loaded them in, but these guys are going to come in really heavy duty.
I feel like they're going to make quite a good little uh, opposition force for the, um, the City Watch guys. I think I might need to scale the leader up a touch though. The leader feels just like a touch too small. I think his face is buried in all that chainmail and stuff, so it's going to make him about 10% bigger. Maybe 5. Right, let's just uh, see what I've just brought in. Jeez. Okay, so... Let me just delete some redundant stuff. Oh, look, I've got some mounted legs. That could come in useful, couldn't they? So if you missed these guys before, that's my heavy armour mercenary company. Uh, there is a model missing out of here though. Here she is. So that's my mercenary company with the uh, with heavy armour. And Commander Porter in the middle. Right, I'm going to delete all of them now because I don't need them at the moment. That's the one I'm working on. This can go as well. Delete all of them. There's my two base sculpts for the city guarding plate. Don't need them right now. But I have saved them back, so I'm going to use the uh, the leg pose. I'm going to turn them into uh, mounted knights at some point. Nice. Do you know, I've got. Did I put the I put the photos up? Did I in the group the other day? Actually, I painted. I, I've been painting. I've still got to paint the hair on most of them and just finish off the faces. But they're pretty much done. Faces, bases, and hair for the most part. I think is all that's left. So let's delete them now. I'm going to come back and revisit. I am going to do some mounted cavalry at some point. So I'm going to do some lightly, uh, lightly armoured horses with the splint mail guys on the back, and then do some uh, some heavily barded horses with the plate mail guys. Um, but I'm also going to do some helmets for them as well because I've not done any uh, any of them in helmets so far. They've all been bareheaded, so I'd like to do. But I'll probably just copy the base set that already exists for each one and just add a helmet to each of the guys. Just give you a, a bit of variety in there. Maybe some shields too. Well, I don't need her. Don't need her right at the moment, but I will keep her because if I do a female version, I will need the arms. Well, this is what I'm thinking. So if I use these arms on the standing guy, oh no, I was really hoping I'd got the uh, I've got the arms in place then. Okay, so what I'll do, I'm going to take the body of the crossbow. I don't need the whole crossbow. And I'm going to take the hands. Laborious, isn't it? It's taking its time over this clicking, clicking business. Oh, I assembled my farmer's hay cart like early, uh, last night as well, so I'll be um, posting that in the Discord and on the um, Patreon page and stuff later as well. Why 
what I might do when I do, when I release the uh, the mounted knights, I might put some mounted Saracens out as well. And what do you think about like dwarf mercenaries as well, and like elf mercenaries? You know, like a few non-humans maybe. How's it look? It was honestly perfect when I saw the operation. Uh, right, well, I haven't glued it. And my wheels are a little bit loose. So one of them has fallen off. But, oh, and the farmer's now fallen off the car. I've, I've just done a drive kit on it, basically. It's a. Uh, Looking pretty. Oops, model in the bin. Share that in the Discord. You can see what I'm on about. Yeah, I think there's, there's got to be... I mean, whenever they get encountered in the game, they're always human for some reason. I don't understand why they do that. You know, you've got all this wealth of uh, wealth of races and stuff we can use. But they always just throw the human ones at you. Did that photo not take at all? Am I imagining that I took it? What is going on with my photos? I guess that Discord's going screwy on my phone. Let me just uh, nerf it. Let's pop it back up again and I'll float, throw it in the group. Don't know what was happening. I had like pictures flying all over the place. It was just weird. There you go, I'll just fling it in. Right, so I can uh, invert. Ah, oh, yeah. I've got something else here as well that I've printed that I haven't printed in a. Well, I haven't printed for me yet. I'm leaning in. Oh god, that was a bit of a, a pivot. I'm leaning in uh, Chieftain. So he's going to get painted. And if, if you're in any doubt as to how much of a unit this guy is, 
He's uh, almost as big as the ogre. <laughs> so he's a big one. I think he's possibly a bit too big. He's supposed to be about... Um, I don't know, actually, they're supposed to be about nine foot tall, aren't they, the leaning? I'll put him next to a human, that's probably not a far a far cry off where he's supposed to be. Uh, right, so... <clears throat> Let's get delete hidden on that. Bring it to this guy. We're going to paste. I knew it was going to do that. God forbid I've got the scale the same. That feels about right, though, I think. Right, let me position this crossbow. Into these hands. issue is he's not going to fit as he like that so the way this trigger is I'm not sure it's going to work as I intended this, you know. Certainly not the minimal effort approach I was hoping to get. <laughs> Just get rid of the uh, crossbow that's here. That might life a little bit easier. Right, then this hand here, I'm going to um, mask. Invert, and we're going to position it so it fits where I want it to go.
That was very nearly a major fail, wasn't it? <laughs> I know, yeah. It's like it's a. Uh, it's like there's a problem if I try and give myself uh, an easy ride, isn't it? Sure, they say idleness is the enemy of creativity, and if they don't say that, they should. It should be an actual saying. It's like it's making me do it properly. First bit of coffee of the day. Once I've got this sorted, the next thing to kind of keep on or adjust is the to make that and I need to get the trigger handle next okay so let's get this hand positioned I didn't realize I bought the belt here I don't need that let's delete the hidden Now I need to um, I need to disregard the position that the bow is in as far as this model goes because I need to make this work as a, as a pose. So the trigger hand needs to be on the front of the right. So I think what I need to do is. Let's just only have this visible. I was just going to mute you a second so I get a uh, pick up a call from the wife. Got a little elf who wants to borrow some super glue but doesn't want to be on camera, so I've just had to pop it outside. <laughs> ah, right then. Um, right, so now that I've hidden that, which I don't think is going to work long term, I'm going to split hidden, is what I'm going to do. And that way I can do this with minimal faff. I'm going to straighten these fingers down. Thank 
No worries, bub. Let's <clears throat> go straighten that one. And then these two need to be there, but they need to be they need to be bent still. But from further down. So we'll bend that back up. So these are the ones that are gonna be on the trigger. <clears throat> so we have two fingers on the trigger and two not. So that's not right, can't you? and move to polish brush to just bring these last two in. Right, let's position this now. Pretty happy with that. Let's just close that in with that. Um, and I just need to sort this thumb out. So the positioning there is no good. Bring the tip of the thumb round to that finger, so if I can at least get them to touch a little bit, I'm gonna piddle around trying to put support on them. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. There we go. Or vegan dinner, if you prefer. <laughs> So, so I need to bring that knuckle in because there's a bit of a spur in the joint. I think I am going to bring these round as well. Now I can see them in situ.
Okay, so. Now, the wrist. is going to need to be a little bit of. So it's going to have to be like. Not that, is it? So, if I hold it down so the trigger's there like that, I've got the arms going to be coming out at a right angle. This is coming down to the hold the thing, and then this arm is here. So I need the wrist on this one pointing this way. Saying right, so yeah, so hands like that, wrist coming off at about 45 degree angle, which would be about that ish, give or take. And then the other one, so that one there, like that, oops, and then that one holding the front and aiming, so that will be. Yeah, pretty much straight out, I think. Well, I think I can work with that then. So let's just let's just save this. Let's save it with the hands on for future use, eh? Because if I come to use that again, that's going to be a faff up to do that every time. Okay, so, um. So this whole thing now needs to be rotated to facilitate a shot. So let's see if we can make these arms move into place.
Oh, so whittling away some of the excess files that I've imported here that I don't need. Is that the scene is not needed. Oops. That's what I need to do merge visible again. And then I want to come and take the crossbow elements. And we're going to go and put them in the seam with them. So that I don't have to do it again. Okay, so first guy. Let's get his arms in place. <coughs> Let's isolate this off. Is a problem then. The uh, arm wants to clip straight through. The issue might be that the crossbow is not long enough.
Oh, damn. That's decidedly mangled, doesn't it? I'm going to have to come in and do some anatomy fixes on that. Hey Skyhawk, how you doing mate? Just struggling with some crossbow dudes. Turns out it's quite tricky to sculpt a crossbow, put it on a model and actually have it just fit. Who knew? How you doing today anyway? Nice plan, or are you just chilling? Come on. <clears throat> I'm just saying, look what I got off the printer today. A lovely, monstrous ogre. My back just cracked. <sighs> nice, nice. What you got? Nice. I haven't had mine yet. I don't know what I'm going to have either. But we've got a few things in the fridge. I just need to. Uh... Yeah, I'll tell you what, the print came out great. The um, I've been having some major issues with my Sonic Mini 4K. Um, and I was at my wits' end with it. I did not know what was happening. And somehow, the um, the exposure on it had changed from two point two point six seconds or two point seven seconds, which is more like optimum um, exposure time. It changed from two point seven seconds to one point four, without me actually realising it had happened. So I don't know whether it was a lychee kind of like rolling out an update and it had standardised it or. I mean, 1.4 seconds is what I use on my on my frozen uh, on my Epax X1. So there's every chance it's possibly picked up from there, um, or I've accidentally cross-contaminated the two um, profiles or something like that. But either way, I hadn't realised it happened. I've been struggling to get these prints up, and in every single print, I've just been failing to miserably. And then I did a. Uh, a calibration print to, to correct it and realise where it was so ever since I've uh, got it dialed back in again the prints are coming out beautifully I think I've possibly over supported the Ogre um, just because there was quite a lot of supports in there because I was worried about the mass of him but in reality actually he's not as big as I thought because I thought he was this is this is the original ogres I used for the Kingdom of Talarius. And this is him in comparison. So he's about I don't know, about seventy five percent of the size, eighty percent. So he's a little bit smaller than him. Um, but mass wise he's uh he's nice and hefty. So like I say if I put him next to the the standard human he's definitely an ogre you know what I mean so I, say, I think I'm going to go back and rescale the Kingdom of Talarius ones and bring them down just a touch so that they fall more in line with that size because they look cool before but they also look a little bit big Yabanaria <laughs> I hope that was right thank you for the sub so yeah, you're joining me today just as I'm struggling to sculpt um, Cross Roman. 
cross bowmen rather. So the uh, the arms and everything here, they're all giving me a bit of a headache because basically to hold a crossbow and shoot a crossbow, your arms have to be in a particular pose, and so the way the trigger is underneath, your hands have to be on the front of the crossbow, your thumb on the top, and then uh, triggering down. And I made this crossbow without um, actually having the model like, in situ first, which is pretty much how I'd always do it anyway. Uh, and it came back and bit me in the ass because, quite frankly, nothing's going right to me today. <laughs> I'm on a deadline, I've got to get two of these guys made today, so... We can get rolled out for uh, for November's Patreon and Tribe subscribers. I'm just going to um, get this guy's arms in position first. We'll turn his head so his head looks like he's at least trying. I think I can rotate the. Uh, do not let me put the arms onto the body for a minute. Oh, turns. Uh, let's get that. I shouldn't have done that before I've merged them all. Should have made them all a polygroup first. Group that now, bring it back, and now I can do it. Okay, so job on now is to, whilst this guy has not been posed at the waist, what I can do is I can take the shoulders together. whilst the shoulders are still in line and I can relax the, uh, the pose and that feels better to me already don't know what you guys think but I'm much more comfortable with that as a, uh, as a pose Obviously, legs aren't done. Um, the legs have still got to be posed, so that's that's not to be included in that statement.
So we'll do that and then we'll try and get an actual shooty pose where the arms are up and the other one's outstretched. That, was, that one's going to need the hand rotating around so the arm falls underneath the crossbow. And then I can do that one then. So we'll do that on the next guy. Uh, top of this guy's turban needs sculpting in. So let's just add some... Uh, Add some boat, uh, some got straps to the top just so it looks like it's part of it. Drag this bit down so we've got a little bit more drop in front. I want to close these little piddly gaps. <coughs> See them there just on a belt, uh, just sitting on the buckle. Let's get them closed out because. Having gone back in yesterday after the uh, when I was doing support, I had to go back in and do a few tweaks because of those kind of things. Elston's going to drop in and pay us a visit today. Do you know what? I'm going to put these. Um, I'm going to put it through the uh, the Discord and the, the Patreon stuff later. I think, but the uh, these guys while I'm test printing them. I've got to do another set of test prints to get the uh, the crossbowmen off when they're done. And what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to run them on a giveaway. Um, so I'll find them a nice home, I think. So we'll do a little, uh, a little resin giveaway as a new product announcement. <laughs> and a little skyver. Not like he's got anything better to do, is it? Oh, I'll tell you what, I don't know if you guys have watched it. Have you seen um, on uh, Netflix? I think it is. No, is it on Netflix or did I just catch it on telly? I think it's just on one of the catch up channels like BBC iPlayer or something like that, or Discovery Plus or something like that. But I think it's Discovery Plus. It's a, a series called Ed Stafford, uh, First Man Out. Started watching that with the wife, it's really good. You get Ed Stafford has to go and. Um, gets dropped into some inhospitable terrain of some kind 
uh, along with some other kind of survival expert and they're in a race to see who can get to a, an, an exfil point first and usually it's about seven days they have to kind of survive whilst they're making their way to this point I mean to just deal with all the stuff that they've got the episode we watched last night they were in Kazakhstan um, and they were in this like this like chasmous terrain oh, my, I've never seen anything so weird in my life it was bizarre um, it looked like a, a kind of like setting you would have on like a 40k table um, on like some alien landscape and they got all these like like 200 meter cliffs or 200 foot cliffs that were literally just made of clay uh, and it was so barren and dry there all the water had kind of gone and they had to get out of here and then go through like a desert through some to, through to some sand dunes so it's just like water was just going to be a problem all the way through but everything was so dry that this clay surface to all these rocks it was like it was like trying to scale flaky pastry it was just flying out of their hands everywhere but you'd never seen anything like it. It looked like, um, I think Ed Stafford comments, it looked like a big brain at some point. When he, when he got to the top and he was looking out over the whole landscape, it looked like he'd climbed out of a brain. <laughs> so it's, honestly, it's weird. So if you've not seen it, if you like those kind of survivally type things, then it's a... Uh, See if I find a picture of it here. It was like um everything was like weird shapes as well. Like it wasn't like that, that's what it was like. See that see that there that Oh, everything's kind of like rounded and there was all these like this was it they're basically in this terrain here they're having to like climb they're in the bottom of this like little little ravines running through they're basically like dried riverbeds and they were so dry you know when you get all the cracked soil and it's just like you know it just breaks apart um, and these two guys were basically like racing to get out of there and this this mad guy on the right he used a uh, it was a camel's scapula bone <laughs> that he found like, a, like like dried out in the desert. He's like leaping down the side of one of these cliffs. It's all like loose clay, and he basically just jumped down. It starts sliding down, like hacking this bone into the uh, into the the hill as he's going down to essentially stop himself or slow himself down, like use like a break. That was a nutter. Right, I'm going to do uh, something a bit different with this guy, I think. So, I don't like that. I really don't like that. What's going on here? That little string bothers me. See if I can get that there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the scimitar. And I'm going to sling it up on his back. I don't typically do back mounted weapons.
car. It feels appropriate now. going to extrude that back into the back so it's a little bit more what's the word hasn't got the big spaces behind it still have the big spaces behind the sword but I can fill that in with the belt that's fine that'll work and the shirt as well we'll do is use his uh his robes as a oh god we we'll use his robes as an infill The reason I'm doing this, by the way, um, which I haven't even explained, I want the quiver to be on that side, and for the quiver to be on that side, I need to flip a few things, so I'm going to flip the belt. <coughs> Let's mirror that. You see, now I've got the belt slung down there, and if I take my thingy off, I can put the quiver in. The final thing I'm going to need to do on these guys as well is name them all. Because I don't know if you've noticed, on like almost everything I've done since I started doing the Descent into Averna stuff, I've given all the characters names. Um, and I quite like doing it. I quite like them. I quite like them all having their own kind of identity.
mean, at the moment, I've literally just called them Swordsman 1, Swordsman 2, Axeman 1, and whatever else, because I haven't had time to think about it. <coughs> but before they go into my web store, they will have proper names. Uh, they'll be individually individually named. Not that it makes a huge amount of difference to anyone or anything, but I know. Right, let's just uh, rotate that hip. Oh dear, that was not right, was it? I moved the leg when I did. Just in case you're wondering, I am setting him up, setting him up for a good foot on rock hero pose. Except it's not a hero, so. change my brush to curve pinch which it's not even a brush I've ever used so I couldn't even comment on what it does Do it subconsciously without even realising.
You guys wouldn't happen to know when the last time I did a foot on rock pose was, do you? What was the last model I released that had one? I'm trying to think back now, I can't even... Feels like it's been a very long time. I need to save this because I haven't saved in a while. Right, while I'm saving, <coughs> I'm just going to go for a quick toilet break. Grab myself a fresh brew. And uh, I'll be back to you guys in a minute, so don't go away. And I'll finish up this uh, foot on rock crossbow and pose and get on to the next guy. I'll right, see you in a minute, guys. Thank you. 
Right, the guys are back now. So, I made myself some toast and a cup of soup while I was at the house. It was lunchtime, and yesterday, by the time the stream ended, I hadn't eaten all day and I was absolutely starving. So, do excuse me, I'm going to scoop, but I'm going to eat my uh, eat toast while I'm sculpting. So, that again. Bit of Vegemite. I had to buy Vegemite because I had to, had to know if it was different to Marmite. And what it was, the Australians were raving about with it. Frankly, there's not a lot of difference. You guys got got a few lunch today then. <clears throat> You're back out with the animals today, Rich, or you uh not working or I don't even know what you do for a job, actually. What do you actually do as your, what, day job? Is it something to do with animals, no, you ah. How is the pup today, by the way? Better? Well, I say better. <laughs> he ain't gonna be better that quick, is he? Doing well at least, I hope. Do you do the animal training as well, or are you just like a assistant? Oh, that, that dog goes doing well. He's doing well, isn't he? He got the cone of shame. <clears throat> That's nice that you guys work together, bro. I say I have my wife working with me, but we don't have um, much interaction on a day-to-day -day basis. We have a little chat about what she's going to get done in the day, and I come down the office to do my sculpting. She sits up in the house doing the uh, the admin bits that she's got to crack on with, so getting products loaded into the website and all that kind of good stuff. <clears throat> Although at the moment I feel like I've seconded her out to the school PTA because she's doing all the uh, 
Christmas fair prep and stuff like that. It's become almost like a full time job. I actually gave up teaching to kind of like get a better work life balance, and at the moment she's doing all this PTA stuff in the daytime. And then come the evening, she's uh, sitting down to start trying to do the admin stuff for me that she's supposed to be doing as a as a day job. <clears throat> I ain't making her. I'd rather she didn't do the uh, the extra work, but she's, I think she feels guilty, like she's got to do it because she's been paid to do it, kind of thing. The reality of it is, I'd, I'd pay her just to get her out, of, keep her out of uh, school, if I'm honest. The fact that she's doing all this extra work for me and like really kind of like you know pulling her weight as far as the uh, getting the website up and running was goes is a a, a big bonus. <clears throat> so if you know anybody who's thinking about going into teaching, warn them off it, man. It's a joke of a profession these days. She has, hasn't she? It's, it looks really nice. I'm really, I'm really pleased with it. She's just going through now, adding more tags. So when you go to like the product filters, you'll have things like male, female, paladin, fighter, etc. <clears throat> oh mate, teaching's just got ten times worse since she started like fifteen years ago, and she enjoyed it then. And as the years have go, gone on. It's become more about arse covering and filling in paperwork and having to do stuff to prove that you're doing stuff rather than actually doing it. Um, and all the all the extra paperwork doesn't benefit anybody. Like you know, like there's so much stuff that needs doing to just turn up and be able to teach in a day, with planning and lesson prep and all that kind of stuff. There's all this extra work they have to do, and then the schools always throw in all this extra nonsense. I mean, the school she used to work at before she um, before she quickly started working with me. I had this um, this like ethos thing, which was like, you know, there was all these like little rules, teamship rules they called them. <clears throat> if it's not beneficial, don't do it. And that, and I said to her, I said, do you want to just call call the teamship rules and throw them back in the face and just tell them you're not doing it? You know, it's like. How much do they want? Do they want the teachers to all burn out and like, you know, have to kind of re-resource and stuff? And then when she didn't notice it, they didn't even try and retain her. You know, they were just like, "Oh, you've made up your mind. See you later then." Cool. Excuse me, that was messy and unexpected. Yeah, it's not fun. It's not a good. Um, it's not a good profession to be in. And she literally got to a point of burnout. You know, she was coming home upset all the time. She was constantly stressed. We argued loads because of it. And every time we argued, it was always because of schoolwork. And it might not have been because we were arguing about the schoolwork, but it was the schoolwork that was making us stressed and anxious. And you know, that was what that was what was the ultimate source of the argument. <clears throat> The argument would be some bit silly, but um, she's been a lot more chilled out since uh, since we got her out of teaching. And now our niece is looking at um, going into into teaching, and we keep telling her like, you know, don't do it, old, oh, don't do it. It's not worth it. I think ultimately they're runners. Schools are run as businesses these days, aren't they? Which is, it's not really in anyone's interest. It's a, it's a silly way of doing things. <clears throat> the result, the, the focus should be on like the, uh, you know, the actual results the school are getting for the kids, the actual educational standards that they maintain. But they're just not. That's not the uh, focus at all, is it? It's, Like budgets and money and it's all academies now as well isn't it yeah as you say it's better off out of it <coughs> keep clear <coughs> I 
But I had the same thing when I was doing health and safety. I was a health and safety manager. I'd walk in <clears throat> and I'd be like, you know, we're looking at health and safety policies, making sure that, you know, everyone's safe doing risk assessments. So I was I always looked at it from a pragmatic point of view. You know, I, if if something was a genuine hazard, we would cover it, we'd, we'd identify it all and everything else. All the little insignificant hazards, I'd identify them, but we'd note them as insignificant hazards. And I'm not doing a risk assessment for them. And ultimately, when you're doing a risk assessment, this is totally off topic for sculpting, by the way, so apologies if you come here for sculpting and you get in health and safety uh, <clears throat> 101. But the, uh, the whole thing with the risk assessment is it's for significant hazards and risks. So you document, the, you identify the hazard, you identify the associated risks and the likelihood of them actually becoming an injury or an incident of some kind. And then you put controls in to mitigate them. So as soon as you start putting controls in as the mitigation measure, as the health and safety person then, or as an auditor, you've got to then come along and audit those controls. So when I joined the last company I worked for, one department had risk assessments for making a cup of tea and I, I sat down with him and I was like look guys <clears throat> you need to sort this out because I've got to come and audit you on your policies and procedures and I'm going to come and audit you on your procedure for making a brew and if you if your guys are not following that procedure they're not doing all the controls that you've identified I'm going to have to fail you I'm going to have to write you up on it and I don't want to do that because it's paperwork for me and it becomes nonsense then. And everyone goes on about, oh, it's health and safety gone mad. It's people arse covering. The whole thing, health and safety as a whole, like, you talk to the direct the directors when I was trying to do these um, things for like the one business I worked at, I won't name them, but God, they did not want to do it at all. They would stand there and they would shout from the rooftops about safety was their number one priority. Um, but if they had to put their hand in their pocket and pay for anything, not interested. Well, it's not your number one priority then, is it? If, you, if you're quite happy for, to like, let people go into risky situations because you haven't got to put your hand in your pocket, that's not the uh, that's not what the game's about. But that was it, <clears throat> you know, and it's... It was all about demonstrating that the red tape is there and showing on paper that everything was right whether it actually was out in the field and whether you know, the guys who were doing the jobs were actually doing what the paperwork said that was immaterial to them and a lot of the time it was just copy and paste and throw it in a folder and you know I'll come and audit the folder and well, if I'm going to audit the folder I kind of need to see what's happening on site as well yeah because the folder has to match what the act actual activities are. And frankly, I'm glad I don't have to do any of that stuff anymore. Because <clears throat> it was one of those jobs I ended up in. It was never it was never something I'd set out to do. do you know I mean, I never woke up one day and thought, do you know what I really want to be? A health and safety advisor. I really want to be an environmental manager. Nah never happened, do you know what I mean? I don't think anybody ever kind of wakes up and thinks that's what they're going to do. It's like some poor sod just gets nominated to do it. <laughs> saying luckily in this country we don't have to do written risk assessments and documentation for health and safety until you get over five employees <clears throat> so 
you know, at the point when I managed to build a team, I'm well equipped to be able to do it myself, but um, like the health and safety procedures and stuff like that, I'm well equipped to be able to do that because I'm 12 years experience on it, but the uh, <clears throat> the vast majority of people, I think, they, they're just going to go for a, a, a straight off template off the, uh, off the internet, and that will kind of do the job for them, I think. Alright, <clears throat> I really need that gap filled under there. I, I'm not having that. That's nonsense. Yeah, absolutely, and it is. And the thing is, the managers. There's actually potential that the managers who are responsible for health and safety can actually face prison time if they get it wrong. That somebody dies because they've not followed procedures. If the procedures weren't there or the enforcements weren't there and stuff, and it could be proven, there's prison sentences on the line. Um, and when that law came in, all the managers suddenly kind of picked up and they were like a bit more interested but ultimately they were still looking to find out how they could find loopholes and what the minimum what's the minimum they had to do to comply so you shouldn't be doing the minimum you need to comply you need to be doing what you need to do to keep your guys safe so all fun and games Yeah, yeah, that's it. They put a law in place that basically says, I can't remember when it was now, it was probably, I want to say it was about 2000 and, maybe about 2000 and, somewhere between 2012 and 2015, I think it was. Um, it was like health and safety for directors or something like that. Um, I can't remember what the legislation was called, I'm so far out of it now. I used to know all the legislation and everything, you know. <clears throat> but now I'm much happier. <laughs> I just like to moan about it sometimes. I mean, things would, things would have to be going drastically wrong for me to take a step back into health and safety at this point, do you know what I mean? And I think I'd need to do about a, m a month of reading up to be able to kind of like get back up to speed with like current legislation and stuff. I mean, I know I could do it, but I'd still rather not. Let's uh, inflate under the guy's chin. <coughs> yeah, I mean, basically, my my plan all along um, has been to to grow and expand, and I was. I was making my way towards that when I was doing the um, the Kingdom of Talaria stuff, and then the whole all the crap happened with my mini factory, like screwing me over a little bit. And then um, when that happened, I ended up eating into the the money I'd kind of raised through the Kickstarter to just keep me ticking over. So um, that hindered me, and then we had. Um, like the various other things that happened then that had the knock-on effects that kind of like whittled down even my subscribers or my actual revenue. 
and then they pulled their plug on the advertising support they promised and stuff like that which meant that all of my all of my plans that kind of at that point really relied on them delivering the goods um, just fell flat <clears throat> so it set me back massively and I've had to try and like rebuild it re-establish everything and it's been a real hard so I basically feel like I've started from the ground up now <clears throat> except I've got a decent collection of models in the background so, so yeah like I said I'm not their biggest fans I'm going to give this guy an eye patch just because Be the other eye. I mean, I know me and you had a good chat about it, didn't we, Richard Chilcon? And I kind of explained all the uh, all the the crap that had been going on. That's all I can do, really. And I say, unfortunately, there's no document documentary evidence to kind of prove what I'm saying. So. They were very careful about that, very, very sneaky. So it's my word against theirs, and they're gonna deny it till the uh, cows come home. So all I can do is just chalk it up as, an, as a learning experience. Um, and hence I've put my own platform and, um, you know, move away from the, the my mini factories and the whatnots. Because you know, no matter what they what they say and what they promise, they do not care about your business as much as you do. <clears throat> and their interest, since they've got shareholders, is all on the money side of things. So, <coughs> well, I've still got the um, I've still got my mini factories for for doing STL rollout. But the um, like the new one now is I've got my own website, haven't I? So <clears throat> I just need to try and figure out how I can deliver STLs through my site. I think Andy was telling me I can do something. Like I can create a, uh, a custom order and roll that out to um, everybody who's on my email list. So everybody who's on my patrons list. So I can just roll it out and they all get the files through through my thing. <clears throat> so this month I'm going to do that but I'm also going to do my mini factory because well it's the easy way of, of delivering that I know is reliable and then once I once my my website is proven to to be able to do it um, the next one will be <clears throat> the um, what you call it stop delivering through my mini factory and start delivering through the Lions Tower. So it'll, we'll get there eventually, but it's just <clears throat> it's just taking going to take a little bit of time, and I don't want to kind of I don't want to stop a tried and tested method until I know for certain that it's uh, it's working. Which you know is understandable, isn't it? It's uh. As much as I want to get away from them and do my own thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about the contingency, isn't it? Okay, I'm quite happy with this guy. He's uh, <coughs> he's looking apart. He's a bit lighter than the other guys. I haven't got so much armour on him, but that's fine because he's a crossbowman. He's got his sword on his back, ready to fight, and he's got um, I just need to actually just going to put a little bit of movement in the cloth here.
Yeah, it's, it's it's one of those little things you can do. To, like you know, you've got to give them a little bit of a story, haven't you? A little bit of a little bit of a background. And I always think a one-eyed arch is quite a quirky little uh, <laughs> a quirky little addition. You know, you kind of really need your uh, both eyes for doing like depth and range. So without without both eyes, he's at a bit of a disadvantage. So he's either very good or very very good, or he's a he's a liability, and that can be down to the player to decide. Just um, do a little bit of a polish um, pass on this. <coughs> so where I've done the loincloth bit, and I've pulled the mesh. I'm not quite happy with the way it's pulled. So what I need to do is I just need to go back in and just do a little bit of uh, refining on it. So. Sometimes I can get away without having to do this, but often it's worth still doing that pass just because it helps you to refine the shapes and things. Just check on my music and see how the uh, <clears throat> how the time's looking on it. Right, we're about four minutes from the end, so let's just wind it right back. Closing some of these little gaps that I know are going to come back and bite later. Let's give him a few scratches, dinks and dents. Turn laser mouse off.
to do a detail on his trousers, don't I? I need to detail his trousers, I need to merge his gloves and his hands, smooth out all the finger joints and stuff. I want to give him a few look. I want to make him look a bit tatty, but I don't want to make him look like a skeleton. You know, like where I've got all the undead where they're mega tatty. I don't want to quite get to that level. Oh, and then I need to do his rock, don't I? Can't do a foot on rock pose without a rock. Because that would just be silly. Let's have a lazy mouse back on for that, so smooth those strokes out a bit. So even having lazy mouse on just a tiny bit really makes a difference to how smooth the strokes are. So unless you've got like a severely misplaced sense of confidence, if you want it on, you're doing things like that. <laughs> <laughs> the only time I ever turn it off is when I'm trying to do like um, like bits of damage and stuff like that, nicks and things. Because these these little nicks and whatnot, they they go in better um, without having the the laser mouse because when you click wherever you click, that's where the hole goes or where the cut goes. Uh, when you've got laser mouse, you have to do a drag to to start it off. I was like this one now, I can just do that. Little holes and they're coming in. Cheers, Rich. <coughs> Couple of little dents in the metal. Right, let's sort his trousers out and I'm ready to call him done, I think. Right, lower the intensity on the Z, uh, increase the intensity on the, uh, increase the draw size, sorry. And you want laser mouse on as well to make sure that these strokes are smooth. Remember, anywhere I put a, a raised stroke, I'm going to put a, an indented one next to it when I'm doing fabric creases. <coughs> and vice versa as well. So if I put a if I put a crease in there, I'm going to put a raised line next to it or near it. To help create that proper peaks and troughs type um, effect. Right, 
let's just make sure. Yeah, there we go. So a lot of it is covered by <coughs> cloth, so that's not an issue. Um, a little hunt around for any of those dodgy areas that are going to haunt me. I'm going to bring the trousers forwards. Just here so we can close this gap. And I'll bring the loincloth bit into that to close it up as well. Use the inflate tool just there just to help the touch. Right, I've got a problem area here. Um, actually, is it a problem area? No, I can live with it. Oh, we've just had a GM workshop with a big raid. Thank you very much. How are you doing? <laughs> What's that? Is that potatoes I've got spinning in the chat? Or is that... I can't quite make it out. <laughs> it is potatoes. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I feel absolutely honoured. <clears throat> and flattered. I'm very full of potatoes. <laughs> How are we all doing today? How was the stream this morning, GM Workshop? I'm in a good one, I hope. Let's put his trousers back on and make him decent for you lot. <laughs> Alright, so I'll show you what we've been up to anyway, so you can see, because it's not just this guy, this is uh, the latest one. Um, <clears throat> so this is, I've been doing a lot of, um, a lot of sculpting for Descent into Avernus like my own campaign of it so what I've been doing is I've been going through the book and all of the encounters you need I've uh, been sculpting and making and creating a whole range of models for them <clears throat> so the latest um, latest bit of work I've done is these guys who are the Knights of the Shield so if you've ever played D&D &D, or if you've, if you've not played D&D &D and you don't know who these guys are um, they're oh nice <laughs> well, that sounds a bit uh, a bit minty. <clears throat> What's hang on? I had I had GM workshop raid. But Dread GM was running it, is that right? No? <laughs> you can learn a lot about making miniatures here. In fact, if you. I've been streaming um, <coughs> quite regularly since September, doing uh, lots of stuff, so I've sculpted lots of different models, lots of different styles, and some client stuff as well. Um, so if you want to see if you want to see any of that, just have a click back through some of the uh, the past stuff and see if anything takes your fancy. <coughs> oh, I got you, got you, fancy, fancy unicorn, thank you. 
So yeah, so with this one then, so the uh, thank you very much. Let me show you the rest of them actually, because he's he's the latest one in the group. So I've just taken the others off the printer. Um, we've been doing I've been doing a test print for them. So these are part of this month's Patreon release, um, and they're also going into my store as resin model so, uh, models for sale as well. And I can't find the is it this one? It might be this one. So yeah, so I sculpted the uh, the lady assassin here on the previous stream. This was yesterday, so she was done all on stream yesterday. Um, and then the ogre was the day before, and then the previous streams to that were the the big axe guy and the two swordsmen. So this month we're doing a war band of. Um, <clears throat> a warband of these Saracen types knights so uh, let's jump into your questions there so uh, if you want more than one do you make moulds to duplicate 3D prints or do you print multiple it's easier to print multiple basically if you print moulds um, so you're not going to see this very well but the this is the ogre from that group who came up on printer yesterday uh, what you won't find on him is like mold lines or anything like that, um, and the way I've designed the supports on these guys, I've been I've been printing models for since 2016, so I've got very good at it, um, very good at support design. Thank you, fancy unicorn. The the models when you when you take them off the printer, they basically just go straight off, and there's barely any cleanup on them. So like pretty much within 30 seconds of removing them from the build plate. A little scrape with a with a little scalpel just to kind of like get off any hard to reach supports we can get the models to a point where they're ready to paint whereas obviously if we put them in a mold there'll be a mold line all around it when you make the casts of them so um, you have to spend money on the mold making you have to spend money on casting and because I don't have any of that facility myself you have to outsource it and from my past experience, making models that were going to be cast in resin and metal, the problem we always have is there's limited capacity for people's workloads in their workshops. So people are either producing their own stuff or they've got a list of requirements for clients. Um, and you usually looking around about a six week wait to get into a, an order queue uh, for most companies to be able to kind of get any amount of production done. So if you're like me and you're doing like a trade show and you leave it to the last minute, you've got no hope of getting any stock made. Whereas now I can, I've got my, you might be able to hear a whir in the background. I've got two 3D printers running over there, just uh, doing like customer orders. <clears throat> so I sculpt all the stuff, and then we got it all printed here. And my wife works with me, and she helps to um, to get all the stuff done. But again, if you're not familiar with with me as a as an artist, I've, I've been um, I've been hobbying since I was five years old. So I've just just turned 39 this month. So that's 34 years of painting miniatures, playing games, and all that kind of good stuff. So um, I've come into the I've come into the kind of the industry as a sculptor from the background of being a hobbyist first. So going through converting models uh, to make them unique to sculpting entire miniatures in green stuff putty, uh, right the way through to now doing <laughs> digital. Hey, Elston, you've made an appearance then. How you doing, mate? Yeah, right the way through to doing digital art back in about 2010. So um, I was one of the one of the first kind of uh, artists to put up a Patreon um, doing the STL files back in 2019. Um, back when Artisans Guild first like started up, I was just behind them actually. And then obviously we went into COVID and everything blew up and went mental, and the whole market just got saturated while everyone was sat around at home scratching their asses. So uh, we've nothing better to do. <clears throat> so, oh, yeah, I've been watching. We've been talking about you, Alston. You didn't pipe up, mate. <laughs> so yeah. So today uh, is the last day of November. So I've got a few of these guys to make. So we've got this uh, one crossbowman pretty much done. Um, and just need to put a rock under his foot. Um. So I'm just going to grab a cube, scale it down, pop it so it's roughly under his foot. Give it a bit of resolution and dynamesh it, and then I'm just going to 
mash the shape or mash it to shape. So are you guys all, all miniature painters, miniature collectors, or are you just uh, you just loving your D and D and want to explore other avenues? What's the uh, what's the crack? Elston, were you here for the uh, for the mass of potatoes? Quite enjoyed that, people. Thank you again for the potato uh, salute. <laughs> Who doesn't, unicorn? I wish I'd seen it. I wish I was there to be a part of it. <laughs> Right, so this is the old, uh, the old foot on rock. So I just need to make sure his toe is touching the ground. So I'm looking at this toe here. So I want to make sure that's on the ground, and I want this rock to be also. Well, I say the ground. This line is my ground line. I want this rock to also be on that line. So there it is. All right. So that's now in position. The bottom of the rock should be fairly flat. If anybody's got any questions, by the way, I did say yesterday there was no such thing as a silly question. Elston did try to test me on that. Um, so, relevant questions, Elston. Okay. No rhino babies again. Thank you, dreaded GM. <laughs> Cosmic Voyager, let me have a look. Uh, oh, you want to make minis with different coloured parts. I want to make minis with different colour transparent parts. Is there transparent paint? Uh, yes. So, um, the best way, you know, like when you get your candy paints and stuff, um, that's probably your best bet. You can get like uh, stained glass paints as well, which will probably work. The difficulty you're going to have, I think, is making it fully transparent if you just want it to be slightly tinted. So, you might be better off if you've got the resin to do that with. If you're going to be producing the stuff yourself, you can get resin um, pigment, and it might be worth you getting a clear resin and adding a touch of the, uh, the pigment to your clear resin to make that thing. If you're buying something which is already transparent, like a canopy on a cockpit or something like that, um, Elston might have a better idea about this because Elston's a, a, a pro painter. Um, but I would personally suggest that you uh, varnish it first. Uh, so the varnish acts as like a primer, so like a matte, a matte varnish. So, oh, you mean printed? Uh, yeah, if you're going to go printed, I would say tint your tint your clear resin. So you look at the uh, any cubic green stuff that they've got. Um, it's Hero Forge, I think it is. Uh, no, not Hero Forge. What are they called? Hero resin. The guys that make Hero resin, they do a whole range of resin pigments. Um, and I believe 3D Jake in the UK, they also do resin pigments. So it's got to be a thing that you can get around and about. <clears throat> um, so yeah, get yourself get yourself some clear resin. Uh, and then get your resin pigments and just add a tiny little bit of it to it just to get that colour. Now the only thing you might need to do is when you, do, when you add the colour in, you might need to do a calibration print just to make sure that your exposure levels haven't changed. Because the... <clears throat> The uh, the resin pigment might actually like, increase your exposure time just a touch. Oh, filament! Sorry, mate. <laughs> I don't know anything about filament. Sorry. Um, I don't even know if you can do. Can you can you do clear filament? Is that a thing? Ah, right, um... Okay, so if you've got a clear filament then, then you, your best bet for painting that may well be something like stained glass paints. Um... Uh, 
but you can use you can use most paints thin down and it will give you kind of a glaze kind of texture uh, texture glaze like finish uh, which will allow all the stuff below it to sh uh, show through and obviously if you've got something that's transparent then it will still be transparent uh, the only problem you're going to have is the key to the uh, the surface so obviously when you put a primer on the primer is helping the paint to stick um, and if you don't put a primer primer down which obviously would obscure the transparent filament anyway um, then uh, what do you call it it's it's kind of defeating the point isn't it so I'm sorry I can't I, I can't be more help with that one it's not something I've got any experience of unfortunately <coughs> So I'm just going to add some facets and angles here to this rock. And then uh, I'm going to just mask the very bottom off. And I've got a, uh, a brush which is rock, te uh, rock texture, rock detail. So I'll boost the intensity of that off. I'm just going to draw a little bit of that across. And it just adds a bit of surface noise to it, which paints up nicely. Bit of dry brushing and whatnot. So there we go, there is one. Saracen style archer. Let's merge these bits down. Make sure I've got everything I need. I have. I'm going to copy him. I'm going to paste him back into that scene where we had the eight guys. See, he looks really tall now, but he's not. <laughs> well, he needs to be a, a touch larger. Because <coughs> having printed him, I know he's a little bit on the small side. Or he feels it anyway. Um, this guy looks like a giant, but it's just because he was so squat and like they're in like lungy positions. Okay, so this is where we where we are at present. Let me just save this. And we're going to go on to the final crossbowman. Hey, no worries, GM Workshop. Thank you for the raid. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll say you're welcome anytime. Um, I wish I had more bots and stuff set up to be able to kind of give you proper shout outs and stuff, but uh, if you've got a link you want to throw into the, into the chat, sir. Uh, yeah, the handful of people I had here at the beginning can kind of like click on and follow, then absolutely feel free. But I do appreciate the massive raid, thank you. Hope you had a, a fantastic stream. It sounds like you had a whale of a time from the sound of things. When I finish streaming today, I might have to jump on there and have a little look and see if I can uh, re-watch your, uh, your content back. <clears throat> right, I'm going to go and add the... Is this... Where was he now? I prepped a second, a second one of these guys somewhere, and I've lost him. <coughs> but yeah, if you ever want to know anything about um, about sculpting models or painting models or any, any, anything else, come and hit me up. Oh yes please, if you can. Uh, I've got the uh, Discord, oh PM, brilliant, lovely stuff. <laughs> I'll grab that in a minute, thank you. Can you do PMs in, uh, in Twitch then? I didn't even know that was a thing. This is me failing, this is... Uh, So many models in this scene. I'm trying to find one of them, and it's 
it's hard going. Here he is. Right, this is the one I want. Ah, Discord, yep, brilliant. Ta very much. Right, so now we're on to second of the guys, so I'm going to come and take this guy's face. I'm going to replace it with a different one. Um, just going to look at the heads I've got available to me at the moment. for that guy. <coughs> so let's take that. Oh, I've lost him again. That one. Let's take the head. Um, right, so what you're seeing here is a production workflow. Let me have a little look at that link you just sent through Cosmic. <clears throat> oh right, I got yeah. I mean, I would suggest that that one's been made in resin. To be fair, um, but you could always. I mean, if you really want it. Um, to be clear, what you could do is make moulds of the parts and then use a clear resin um, with a little drop of, of pigment in that resin. Um, but obviously it means moulding it, so... That's nice, that is, isn't it? Link as well, thank you. There right, we go, that's in my in my queue, ready to watch. Thank you very much, Dreaded GM. Okay, so I'm just going to take this do this little mini head. So this is a production workflow for making models. Um, what do you call it? When you've got to kind of turn around several in a month. So I wouldn't do this if I'm doing like client work um, or something where I've been given a like a brief but for what I'm doing here at the moment it's the quickest most efficient way of creating minis if you like <clears throat> uh, so let's delete the hidden one let's take the spiky shoulder off again <coughs> uh, delete that one I think I might uh, lose the turban on this one. No, do you know what? I'm going to keep the turban, but I'm going to um, slice that through. So this is me designing on the fly, by the way. So um, sometimes when I'm sculpting, um, I've got a design to work to. And sometimes I've got no design. Um, and I just need to kind of make stuff happen and that's what happens more often than not so if you see me on streams and they're pre-planned ones then I tend to have um, uh, like a little image in the corner so like the last the last model I worked on which I've still got to finish was this guy this uh, Troger this is for a game called Cursed Empire so <clears throat> obviously with something like that Clients provided the artwork. I've got to follow it and sculpt that model. Um, but obviously, for something like this, which is my own 
piece. Uh, I have no guide, so my guide is my brain, and I'll be asking you guys to kind of chip in with design decisions. So I think with this one, we already chatted about it earlier. We're going to do them in a kind of a kneeling pose. He's so going to be kneeling with the, the, the crossbow up to shoot. Um, so all I want to know really is, do you, have you got any other kind of requirements or any, any other kind of suggestions you'd like to see? Or anything you'd like me to demonstrate on him? I'm just going to close the holes on this. Yeah, I saw that actually. It's quite cool, isn't it? The uh, what do you call it when you strip a plastic bottle down into a in, into like a filament. <clears throat> I do like the look of that actually. It's clever. I don't actually own a filament printer at the moment. I've been looking at the um, the new Elegoo one. Is it? The ne I want to say it's Neptune, but I don't know if it is. I've seen um, a mate of mine runs the uh, the Fohammer blog, which it used to be all like Warhammer forty five uh, Warhammer stuff, but um, last couple of years he's kind of done a lot more of the three D printing stuff, and now he's um, he's very much kind of looking at the like the three D printers, the three D printing stuff. And he did a bit of a review on the Neptune of day, and he literally took it out of the box, plugged it in, and printed using stock settings, and it was amazing. Like the print quality was fantastic on it. Um, and the, the thing that's always put me off going FDM was the the, the tinkering. A lot, of, a lot of the FDM printers seem to be like tinkering printers, and I just don't have the time for it, unfortunately. <clears throat> it's like this is my day job, making models and. I've got my printers over there, so any orders that come through my website that need printing, they get done over in that corner. Um, and uh, I just don't have the space or the time to kind of dedicate to doing FDM stuff as well, unfortunately. So, as much as I would like to do it, it's going to have to wait for another day, I think. Sculpt that round there a little bit. So this is a lot of this, this is a bit like converting models. So there's a lot of modification going on uh, from stuff that I've done previously for this faction. A lot of that is in the name of time savings, but also in the name of um, making sure we've got some consistency in the design. So the Knights of the Shield, when they arrive in the D&D campaign, they've kind of got these like Arabic names. Uh, there's no visual description of them or anything like that, they're just the Knights of the Shield. <clears throat> so I decided to go and give them these like uh, this like, Arabic Saracen look. So we looked at different um, different source material, different reference images, and just came up with something that was felt thematic, but like thematically different to the other guys uh, I've already sculpted so far. So they've got their own faction identity then. Have you guys ever encountered Knights of the Shield in your uh, in your games?
So Mr. Elston, what are you up to today then? Are you, uh, are you still here? Or are you, uh, have you had to go back to work? or? Split hidden on that, it's going to boost that up and do a bit, uh, a bit more than that. This guy, I'm going to give him a. Um, just a little beard, I think. <clears throat> uh, right, input device. I have got a um, Huion Canvas 22, I think it is. So I'm using a, um, a pen stylus, and then down here I've got this. Let me show you. So I have the graphics monitor here, and then I've got the secondary monitor there, which has got all of my, um, what do you call it, the, my reference images and all of this on it. So this one here, and then over there I've got my uh, my sculpting beast, and then just down there you can't really see, just out of shot a little bit, just over there, like a little 3D printer bank up on um, on a shelf. And then a mess of a painting area just over here. So don't judge me on the painting area. <laughs> hey, no worries, mate. But yeah, this is the um, this is what I use primarily for the sculpting, the uh, the, the stylus. I use a mouse as well sometimes. So I do uh, I tend to use that more for when I'm doing supports and stuff. But for sculpting, almost. Probably 99% of it is done using this. Um, so I'm using ZBrush as a bit of software. Don't know if you're familiar with that or not, but it's a it's a cracking bit of kit. But it is it is prone to crashes, as I discovered yesterday when my uh, stream crashed or my sculpting crashed probably four times in very quick succession. <coughs> it was not fun. <coughs> okay, let's give this guy a little moustache. <coughs> Auto group. merge the turban into the head so that just combines them as a single tool so now I can uh, pick the head turn my symmetry off and I can rotate it Now the arm, we're going to have to do a little bit of a bit of work with on this. <clears throat> so I'm going to lower the lower this down. Oops, and I'm going to reorientate this one. I'm going to need to do, uh, oh god, I'm going to have to do the whole hand. 
Damn it. Okay, so basically what I need to do, I need to change the angle that this hand is held. <coughs> it's holding the... Uh, Yeah, that's it. They're um, they're a fraction of the price of like the Wacom tablets, which is like the, I suppose the industry preferred type thing. But the um, performance on it is as good, if not better. <coughs> I've actually got um, a Wacom tablet myself, but it's a, a mobile one which I use for sculpting when I'm on the move. Um, and in terms of it's like daily use I actually much prefer using the the, the Huion uh, to the to the Wacom they do the 19 inch and I can't remember which one they do now <clears throat> they do a couple of different sizes basically but if you wanted a desktop one the 19 and probably be about the smallest you want to go um, 22 is ideal uh, if you want something that's portable and mobile, the, the, like the, like a 10 inch or a 13 inch or something like that, is okay. I think my portable ones are 13 inch. So, <coughs> right. So let's uh, put the split hidden. So I'm going to need to rotate this hand. So the thumb will be where it is still. This first finger will be pretty much the same. So what I need to do is um, I'm going to isolate individual digits, and I'm just going to position them as I need to. I want to make sure that they contact the. Uh, Yeah, yeah, just the stock stylus, mate. Nothing, nothing special, um, but it's ideal. It's perfect for what it needs to do. So it's about, um, I say, about three years old now. This tablet, maybe a bit, maybe four. <clears throat> so it's done me good. So it's going to bring this to the joints. I'm going to isolate that. I'm going to bring this finger up, and then I'm going to mask off the lowest digit or the lowest joint. Come higher up, and then we'll reposition. And I just need to rotate and sort that. And we'll do the same on the last one. And I have a strong feeling I'm going to have to come and do the same thing with the, um, the thumb as well. Now what I'll have to do is I'll just have to inflate the inside of the fingers and stuff on this. So um, this is just to bring it back into the weapon. We don't want these gaps all the way around it. Let's put that back on. Let's have a little look what we're dealing with. Right, so I need a little bit of inflating here. Let's just turn that off. In there, I think I'm done.
Oh, and I don't know if you guys saw it or not, but uh, we've got a new series of Willow starting tonight. So uh, the, the first follow-on from the uh, the Powerhouse '80s movie. Apparently, there's two episodes on uh, Disney Plus ready to stream, so I am absolutely going to be bagging a bit of that later. I'm just fiddling with the gloves at the moment, just trying to make the hand fit. Oh, and as I do that, I need to move the arm anyway. Brilliant. Yes, at Willow, or is that really excited about this crossbow? <laughs> yeah, I can't wait for it, man. I, I absolutely love the uh, original Willow film. Uh, it's one of my favourite movies from when I was a kid. I even look, I still love it now, like, but um, obviously it's much cheesier now, isn't it? What looking at it back, but. Yeah, I absolutely love it, and I think my uh, I think my little one will be, you know, a big fan too. But we watched the uh, trailer the other day, <coughs> and I do think it might be a touch too scary for him. So we'll just have to see. I hope he'll be able to watch it because I I know he'll love it. save before I do anything else because I know what this thing's like. I'm just going to uh, get a coffee prep so just bear with me a second. I'm just going to take the arms off, the um, the gloves, the fingers, the hands, etc. They can all come off. I won't leave that on this time. I'm going to do what I did before as well. I'm just going to um, flip the belt. To the side, and I'll take the sword. Let's put this up on his back again. I don't know if Val Kilmer's back in the new series, by the way. I know, uh, I know, like the female warriors in it. She, she's, she's back. The one who was like the Death Knight at the beginning. <clears throat> so 
she she's back in it and Willow is definitely back obviously yeah, I didn't know if anybody else was oh god I didn't know if anybody else is in Don't even know, mate. Couldn't tell you. Oh, do not switch that. It'd be a shame if he's not in it, because if they bring him back the original cast, he's kind of got to be there, hasn't he? But equally, if he's not been well. And he ain't as young as he used to be, is he? He's, he's, <laughs> he's hardly going to be, um, you know, like an action hero in it this time around. Like you know when they bring Arnie back for his uh, his films and stuff, and they get him doing all the action stuff, it doesn't feel the same, does it? Stallone and all those guys, you know they're they're like old men now. They can do a lot on films and special effects and stuff, but you know they even the de aging side of things, but they still move like old men. It's like um. Do you see the uh, the fights in uh, in Cobra Kai in the last series? And you had um, I forget his name now, Silver. He's like doing all his fighting and uh, J John Kreese. God, you watch John Kreese doing his uh, his fights in um, in Cobra Kai, and you can tell he's like he's like. <sighs> and they've had to like they've had to make they've had to like you know do cuts and cameras and stuff like that to try and make it look like he's actually. You know, kicking ass. So. <clears throat> oh, no. did you see the? Um, I think my mum sent it to me the other day. There was a thing on America's Got Talent, where a guy turned up on stage um, and did Elvis and <clears throat> deep faked Elvis unto himself. <clears throat> and then had <clears throat> oh god excuse me <clears throat> had Simon Cowell um, and two female judges as backing uh, as backing dancers and backing vocalists on the stage with him and um, it was done like live pretty much as far as you could tell literally just deep faked the hell out of it it's clever and scary what they can do In fact, there's a BBC, um, there's a BBC uh, kind of series, a couple. Of, well, I say series. It's a program. There's a couple of series of it now, called the, the Capture. <clears throat> and if you get a chance to watch it, it's really good. But it's uh, it's basically about deep fakes, um, and the government basically using the technology to convict. Um, you know like if they, they know somebody's doing something but they can't get the evidence they can basically create a mock a mock video um, you know basically just fake the evidence to, um, to get the conviction I'll say it's a really good series but it's a uh, it's scary what they're what they're capable of doing. Oh, I just need to rotate this from the hand here. So let's do the yeah, air. That's it. That should do.
Yeah, the problem is with the, this whole AI thing, ev everything's going to end up looking the same, isn't it? It's like everything everything I've seen AI produce so far, you can tell. It's like it needs to it needs to be able to develop its own flavour, really, doesn't it? To kind of, or you need to be able to program it to a particular style, or I don't know, some of them you can. But everything I've seen AI do just seems to look like AI stuff. Do you know what I mean? It's not saying it's not good, but it's just very recognisable when it's been used. I find. I find. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You can you can totally imagine he'd be he'd be on it. You know what I mean? He'll definitely be on the uh, bandwagon for that. I mean, part of the part of the premise of the, the TV show actually is um, the relationship between the US and the UK, um, and how they they know China and Russia are using this technology, and they can't like they can't like be left behind because if they if they're left behind, then they'll you know they'll fall victim to it. But it's all like it's all cloak and dagger covert type stuff. It's a good show, good series. I recommend it if you're uh, if you're into that kind of stuff. But it does give you a taster of what it, what the world, you know, could end up like with that kind of thing. Well, I don't need that bit of body I had, so I can just delete that. Just delete that as well. Yeah, it's definitely going to come on. The technology, I mean, again, look at 3D printing as an example of how technology can evolve. Like, since um, when I first started printing, I bought a 3D printer that was £11,000 um, and a Sega Pico 2 HD. And it was doing uh, 3D printing at 35 micron layer thickness. Uh, sorry, uh, pixel resolution, sorry. Uh, at the point when nothing else was even close to that um, and I was using it for doing like master miniatures and then uh, what, a few years down the line 2019 we get the Anycubic Photon gets released followed by the Elegoo Mars and various others like the Prusa ones and that so all these other 3D printers start appearing on the market that are all 50 odd micron resolution. They're not as good, they're not as sharp as the one I had, but they're they're pretty decent. And now we've got like the Anycubic D2, which is a DLP printer, which has got like the equivalent of 8K resolution on a very small build plate with, you know, 25 micron resolution um, on the XY pixel size. And it's crazy, and it's it literally has come so far, um, and that printer is 700 pounds versus the 11,000 I paid for something that was similar back then um, and the build plate on it is twice the size as well so you know there's lots of lots and lots and lots of um, technological improvements that have kind of just come out of nowhere really in the last few years um, and then obviously all, all the AI stuff's cropped up in the meantime and you know we're probably not a million miles away from AI being everywhere are we? <clears throat> but it is going to make people question, like, you know, pretty much everything you see, I think you've got a question these days, haven't you? I mean, you can get apps on your phone that'll put your face into a film and stuff like that, so if you, if you can do that with yourself, on your mobile phone, you imagine what these people can do with, like, you know, powerful computer arrays and, you know, bespoke programming and technology and all that kind of stuff, it's not, 
you know, although this, what I'm talking about is a TV drama, it's not fantasy, do you know what I mean? <coughs> Let's just uh, mass this dude's neck off. Chin and his beard above that um, shoulder pad. But I think I might actually just move his shoulder pad around a touch anyway. I never mind my coffee either. I talked about it. Okay, so I'm just going to rotate this shoulder pad, lift it up a touch, and there we go, I think that's, that's about it. Excuse my coffee machine. It's a bit of a chugger. <clears throat> okay. So now that I'm coffeeed up and I'm ready to rock, let's continue. Right, so we've got the crossbow, we've got the sword on his back, which I just need to tweak that strap there. Let's just adjust the angle of the sword so it falls in line with that. like this and just gouge this bit. Brain implant. To do what? Are we getting into the realms of uh, like Deus Ex Machina with the uh, Body augmentations and everything going on. Cyberpunk's the reality. Can't be far off that, can we? There you go. If you could go Cyberpunk or uh, Shadowrun, which one would you pick? Oh, it's Elon Musk, that explains everything, doesn't it? <laughs> He's like an evil uh, genius, isn't he? He's like, the, you know, the bad guys, you see. What was that? Um, have you ever watched Kingsman? I think Samuel L. Jackson's character in Kingsman is basically... Elon Musk or Elon Musk is him rather whichever way around all I want Elon Musk to do is put a rocket or people to buy Dogecoin because I've got a fair bit of it sat around 
sat around in my crypto at the moment, festering. Seems to give it a give it a plug again. Yeah, oh yes, the 100, I like that one. Yeah, 100 was great. A coin-sized implant in the top of the skull that puts thousands of nano-thin wires throughout the brain and wirelessly connects to the computer. Do you know what? If that could if that could be used to kind of diagnose brain issues, it'd be fantastic. Hey, Briscoe, how are you doing, mate? Hope you're doing well. I don't, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my brain for the for the implant in 100 now. Um, God, I stopped watching it at the point when they met the guys in the mountain. I think so. I don't know if I, I don't know if I've seen that far. So I, I don't recall a an implant in the hundred. I need to pick it up and watch it again, actually. <clears throat> Yeah, when I said Cyberpunk or Shadowrun, by the way, I was thinking, like, obviously, if the world was to go down one of those two routes, which one would you prefer to be a part of? Because they're not, they're not dissimilar, with the exception of, like, say, Cyberpunk is dystopian kind of reality, if you like. Um, you know, very, very grounded in realism. And Shadowrun is obviously very fantasy and proper dark fantasy, isn't it? But it's all a bit of an article this morning that was basically pairing the two off. Never actually read the article, like, but it did get me thinking. Really good, thanks. I've uh, managed to do one of these crossbow dudes already today. So the faction is looking like this now. The crossbow guy at the back. <clears throat> so this is the uh, the first the first group. Oh, I feel like that guy's head might be really high. Gonna lower his head down, I think, just a touch. Cheers, Briscoe. So yeah, so we've got the uh, the one crossbowman here. I just need to do a sculpting pass on him once I've merged him all together to just um, finish up his hands. 
before I export him. Um, and then we're going to do this guy again. And he's going to be in a kneeling position, so... I just need to uh, do some adjustment here on him to... But they're on a deadline, aren't they? They've got to be done today, so... <clears throat> I haven't got the luxury of uh, even rolling this guy into another day. He needs to be finished today and uploaded to be rolled out. So I don't piss off a load of uh, subscribers who are expecting content. Mask the knee. Yeah, you know, I bet the um, there's an awful lot that I think it'd be really good for. But I do think I do think the primary thing would be obviously if you've got somebody who's got um, like a brain issue, a neurological disorder. I think it'd be really nice if it was able to um, to help with that. You know, to help help diagnose and treat them. So my dad's recently had um, a diagnosis of Parkinson's. <clears throat> I don't know that's like a neurological thing. See so yeah, if there's something that could help. It's got to be explored, hasn't it? Right. So this front leg. Right, I think we're gonna have to go for. Yeah, it's not great. I mean, he's he was a carpenter by trade for like years and years and years. So, all of the anytime we ever had DIY stuff to do, <clears throat> he always used to come and just do it for us. Um, and luckily, I like learnt a lot from him over the years, <coughs> and um, I've fitted our own kitchen and stuff now. So. Um, you know, I'm in a position where I've got to help him. But, you know, pay your dues and all that. He's not too bad with it, he's just got the shakes a lot. Oh. How do we do this now? I think I put his knee mask at the wrong place. Give me a second. been talking I've been stream I've streamed for about six hours a day or six and a half hours a day for the last couple of days and I feel like my throat my voice is just like struggling for it now <clears throat> right, so I'm gonna bring that foot like that I'm gonna merge <coughs> merge the head with everything else. Yeah, I think I've done the same with him, you know, I think he's Yeah, his head's sitting too high, I need to bring his shoulders down.
Get this guy's head, let's lower it. We got an extra eye in his brain then. Cheers, mate. <coughs> I'll say on um I'm really looking forward to getting these guys like painted as well. I'll get them in the cure in a bit. Um, but the finish has come out great. I can't see any of my supports or anything like that. There's like no there's no dinks or divots or anything in there from the supports. Only things I've got are a couple of like little residuals that have you know those little ones that trap themselves inside. A few of them. Um, a couple of little minor bits on the blade and a tiny little divot under his chin that just needs to come out it's one of those little micro supports because there's a little gap under his chin I should have closed the gap really but I forgot so yeah for the most part I mean What you've just seen me do in the corner there, that few seconds of clean up with the knife, that's just finished it there. <laughs> they need to fight the mercs is what they need, mate. You need to build a little a little team, a little comparable team from the mercenaries. <clears throat> and um pit them against the uh the Saracens. Ah oh, you turd. Let's just move this guy's neck out of the way. Mask it off and delete it. I'm going to auto group, come back into the torso. I can just flatten out the shoulders here. The bit that's protruding up. And then on the neck here, I'm just deal with that one, that's ridiculous. Let's get the dynamic tessellation on. Let's just reshape and reprofile these legs.
So you got a busy painting weekend coming up ahead then, Rich? Oh, you... Cockwomble. And that, people, is the joy of ZBrush. Let's see where I saved it at. soul sometimes. Oh, it's not that far ago. just before I changed his neck and sorted out these straps on his thing isn't it so Just when I think I'm making good progress, <coughs> ZBrush steps in and screws you. It's almost like it's like, ha ha ha, this is going too well, isn't it? Have this. Ugh. But I have to say, it's one of the things I like about doing the live streams here is you guys get to see and appreciate all the pain and anguish that goes into producing all of this stuff for you. <laughs> you all think I've got a cushy job sitting down at the bottom of my garden in my office. And I have, but <laughs> that's beside the point. <laughs> I'll just save this now so it doesn't get lost again. <clears throat> so what do you think you'll be painting the weekend then, Rich?
and try and get these guys on the printer and uh, give them a bash or I think I want to get my Merrigans finished. And then get on with some, uh, get them mercenaries done as well. do here, I'm going to twist him round, Give me a second, let me just uh, mute the microphone, got the wife calling. Cryptic phone call. I think me being on the stream at the moment has probably just got me out of having to go and pick the kids up. So. <coughs> okay, so. So I've straightened up the, um, the leg. Probably now need to just uh, take the crossbow. And the hand and the arm and all the other bits. Let's just put the torso here. I just want to straighten out the crossbow so we shoot the straight. Ooh, print's finished. <clears throat> it's 
it's weird now because I've got this like eerie silence in my office. So after having that hum of the uh, X1 running for so long, it's just gone deathly quiet. So just just as a quick point of comparison on uh, on printers as well. So the two printers I run um, as my like main ones. I've got the uh, Epax X1 with the 4K screen upgrade. So that's a 5.5 inch um, screen with 4K resolution. Then we've got the um, Sonic Mini 4K by Frozen. Uh, and that one is a 6 inch build plate with um, also 4K resolution. <coughs> now visually there's barely any difference in it but the X1 has got a marginally better pixel size, so I think it's like 37 on the 37 micron resolution on the Sonic Mini 4K, and like 35 pixel resolution, uh, 35 micron pixel resolution on the uh, X1. Um, for some reason, <coughs> the light array in the X1 is immense, and it's like way powerful. So my Sonic Mini 4K does a print with a 2.6 second exposure but my X1 does it in 1.4 seconds um, and print quality on both is comparable there's no visual differences you can't tell which one's been done on the X1 and which one's done on the 4k on the uh, Sonic Mini so um, <clears throat> but the X1 is fantastically built bit of kit so the Epax printers, if you've got the budget for them, they are really good. Um, but also they're upgradable. So I bought my X1 as a as a 2K printer originally. Um, it was a 2K RGB one, and I bought the upgrade kit for it, and I upgraded it to 4K myself. So I've still got this like this tank of a printer that is like you know fantastically well built, um, very well supported, but also now it's got the the extra upgrade. Although I will say, since I since I did the upgrade, there have been issues with like like Light you didn't support the upgrade for a while. For example, they didn't acknowledge that the X1 4K was a printer in its own right. They saw it as an upgrade, so it wasn't on their printers list. <coughs> so <coughs> I would have more of them given a choice. Um, but equally, I think the next printer I buy is probably going to be a frozen, uh, a frozen uh, AnyCubic M3 Premium. So, having seen, um, like, you know, the print quality on these printers, it's got a 28 micron um, pixel resolution, which is really bloody good. Um, considering it's also got a 10 inch build plate, <coughs> so. You'll get ten times, uh, sorry, ten times as much, four times as much, um, like physical re uh, real estate to work with um, in terms of where you place your models uh, than you would if you were using like the the Epax X1 or the Sonic Mini 4K. So as much as I love those printers, if I was to buy one more printer, I'd get the M3 Premium. Now, if you're new to 3D printing. That would be a terrible idea because it's always better to start with a smaller printer because the bigger you go, the more um, more of a learning curve it is. So you better to buy a smaller, cheaper printer, make all of your mistakes on the smaller one, and then scale up when you get the chance. Uh, once you've kind of like got your head into it. So if you're desperate, you want to go down the route of like a Saturn II or um, M3 Premium or you know any of those kind of like you know large-scale printers make sure you're familiar with the uh, the resin technology and all of the quirks first because you do not want to find out the hard way that you've uh, destroyed the screen because <clears throat> your screens on the resin printers they're consumables as anybody who's got one will well know um, and one of the problems you'll have is if you if you have a uh, if you know about point loading. 
So basically, if you have uh, <clears throat> 10 tons of pressure being exerted on a single spot and it's spread out across the whole area, that 10 tons is kind of like um, it's not exerting 10 tons of force because it's over a wider space. It's divided over the area it's it's uh, kind of like placed on. If you put a pinhead in the middle of that and then put 10 tons of pressure onto that pinhead, you don't get 10 tons of pressure come through the pinhead. You'll get like 80 tons or something like that. It amplifies in an exponential way because of the the point loading. So when you've got a a screen um, and you've got this build plate coming down and pressing down on top of the screen and then all the resin cures in between if you've got any little bits of cured resin floating around in the things so when you have a failed print and a bit breaks off if you don't get that out of your print bed out of your print vats before um, the print starts that build plate is coming down it's going to press flat against your build uh, against your screen and what's going to happen is that little bit of resin is going to capture between the build plate and the screen and then all of that pressure of the vat is going to be point loaded through that um, that bit of cured resin and it's going to push into the screen and crack it, break it, destroy pixels and you've basically just killed a screen. Um, really easy to do, especially if you're rushing. So anytime you get a, a, a print fail you need to like empty the uh, print vat, you need to do a proper clean up job, strain it off through a, uh, a filter you know all these kind of things that you've got to do as part of the course <clears throat> and then uh, once you've once you've done all of that then you're in a position to put the next print on and try again um, if you skip that stage or you just give it a little swipe around and think you've got it if, that, if you miss that one piece of resin you've just killed the screen now on a Sonic Mini 4K the screen is around about 90 quid um, for, for a 4K screen if you get an 8K screen, you can double the cost of that. So you go for the Sonic Mini 8K, the screen is £197. And I'm talking pounds, not dollars here, so it's probably going to be a bit more. Actually, it'll probably be about the same, because normally what we pay in pounds, you guys pay in dollars anyway. Um, so, yeah, 100, 100 quid for a, a new screen for a 4K. Uh, 195 £197 for a, an 8K screen of the same size. But if you go for like the 8K screen that is a 10 inch, um, like the Saturn II, uh, you're probably talking a sharp end of about 400 quid. <clears throat> so, you know, for the sake of one little mistake, you can kill um, or destroy 400 quid's worth of hardware. So, basically, my point is make your mistakes. On a smaller printer where the consumables are cheaper. Once you've learned the hard way, which for some people is the only way you learn, but once you've learned the hard way, you can kind of scale it up then and go for the um, go for the big ones. I mean, ultimately, you're in control of your own destiny. You buy whatever printer you want, but you know this is a little bit of a professional advice from me. So I see a lot of people as well when, it, especially coming up to Christmas, everyone's kind of jumping on the uh, new printer bandwagon. They want to get something new for Christmas, and I'm seeing a lot of people who are new to the uh, hobby. Who are looking at the the big the big guns? You know they see the Saturn too. They see the uh, the Sonic, uh, the Frozen, like Mega and the Mighty. And I say if you're not if you're not familiar with them, they can really bite you in the ass. And then you've also got the failures as well. So like when you have a print failure. Let's say you've got a bigger printer, you're going to be tempted to print bigger things and more stuff. So when you have a failure, you're going to lose more resin volume because you'll have the stuff that is actually been consumed uh, to make a failed print. 
plus you'll have all of like the the resin that's coating the failed print that you've got to throw out then you've got to strain it off and pour it into the things you're going to lose a little bit in that process as well um, and then you've got to kind of like restart and fill up and go again so every time you have a failed print you're going to have like wasted resin now if you have a wasted print on a, a small bit, uh, print bed it's a, a quid of resin two quid maybe if you've gone for a bigger thing and you've printed something that's larger like a piece of terrain maybe or like some big monsters or something like that so it's you know you've got a little bit kind of eager and got carried away with it um, then you're talking a, a lot more cost of resin and the resins for these things are about if you go for an 8k resin you're talking about 80 quid a bottle 75 80 pound a bottle um, if you go for a 4k resin you're talking 45 pound a bottle give or take <clears throat> so you know it really uh, it really can add up then you have your FEPS uh, the film you have to put in FEP on a, a six inch um, five and a half inch build plate printer like the Sonic Mini 25 quid for like five sheets or something like that you go for FEP on a larger one you're gonna pay 25 pound for one sheet so you know it's gonna be um, proportionally more expensive so then when you get those fails that destroy your FEP as well, you know, it's not good. And so there's a lot of there are a lot of things you've got to uh you've got to keep your eyes on when you're doing like 3D printing as a hobby. There you go, some pre-Christmas free advice on uh, 3D printer selection. If I was recommending a printer to anybody, if they were after a, a new a new one and they're new to the hobby, if they're after miniatures, I would always say Sonic Mini 4K if you can afford it. Uh, if you can't afford it, then the Elegoo ones are fairly close, um, but I really don't like their build plates because they have these spring-loaded cheap things that I don't like spring loaded ball joints that are just prone to fail um, but the any cubic printers are probably a better one because they've got a more solid build plate so they're not going to kind of have that um, dislodging issue so the problem you have with the the, uh, the Elegoo ones is like the build plate comes up here but it's got a spring loaded ball joint here so you, it goes down and then the ball you have to set the, uh, the base level and the ball, uh, the ball joint locks in and then when you're printing, if you put more, if you put more um, heavy print stuff on this side, and there's more suction force there than there is on this side. If you haven't tightened this up enough, or if the ball joint fails, what happens is as it goes up, it pulls to one side, and then your whole print just is, is wasted; it's gone. Um, and it's just because the build plate has failed. So, for my money, I would always look for a build plate that is solid and is not going to fail. Uh, and my Sonic Mini 4K and my Epax one, they've both got the solid, um, the solid kind of block type uh, fixture at the top, and a um, a little sensor that tells it when it's at the bottom, so you haven't got an auto level. It auto level, so you don't have to tell it to level. <clears throat> so I would always go for a printer that has that feature in there, rather than one that you have to, you know, mess with. So I used to have uh, an Elegoo Mars and. Every time I had a print fail on it, I'd have to re-level the plate because you never, you were never sure if the it was the, uh, the the plate level that had gone. So you'd have to do plate leveling all the time. In the two three years I've owned this Eleguma, uh, the uh, the Sonic Mini, and the Epax X1, I levelled the build plate once <clears throat> on each of them when I first got it. I haven't had to touch it again since. So it's just trouble free printing. The only thing that ever screws up on me now is either the uh, temperature in the office drops mid print if I'm printing overnight say temperature drops the resin gets more viscous and um, requires more exposure time and then you're basically underexposing the print and it fails halfway through so that's that's cause of failure one uh, and the other one is like I had recently my print settings uh, accidentally got changed um, and that meant that instead of doing on the Sonic Mini, instead of doing um, instead of doing 2.7 seconds a layer, I ended up doing like 1.4 seconds a layer. 
and that caused obviously my prints to fail. So other than that, the only thing that's ever going to fail is if I've stuffed up supports and I've not put enough in there. If I've uh, if I've been a bit too frugal with them. But assuming everything's uh, everything's you know as it should be, trouble free printing. Well, let's put a little tassel on the back of this dude's um, turban and call him done. I think. What do you guys think? Is it looking good or do you think you need something else? And then importantly, while I've got 10 of you on the stream, what well it appears I've got 10 of you on the stream, what am I doing next month? What do we what do we want to see as the uh, as next month's offering? Some goblins prepped. Could do goblins. Um, if I go by my actual um, to-do list, let me just tell you what's on my to-do list. So I'll tell you what I was planning to do for next month. So I can tick off my veterans of the order of shield. Oh, I actually need to the the, the shield of the hidden lord, which is what these guys um, are after. Do you know? What? I'll put it back on the screen while I'm while you're pondering this because. There we go. Cheers, Brasco. Brisco. Brasco. Donnie Brasco. Okay, so um, we've got still to do. I've got brigands. I've got hellhounds and a Narzugon. Uh, so a Narzugon is basically a, a devil fallen paladin on a flaming nightmare. So that'll be a fun one. Uh, we've got the Bulazus who are, if I remember right, the Bulazus are like little uh, goat demons, goat devils. We've got a Pit Commander, which is like a massive, great, big female um, kind of devil lord. And then we've got Barbed Devils. So the barb devils are uh, similar to the spine devils, but they're more human-sized, and they don't have wings. And then we're down into uh, ghasts and ghouls and uh, mummies and skeletal minotaurs and things like that. Oh, we've got mesoloths, which I think are the big uh, fat sloth-like demons. Um... Couple of psychotic crazed minotaurs. Oh, we've got some griffins to do. It's a good old eccentric, mis eccentric mix on my to do list. Or, like I say, I can do you a little goblin crowd, uh, a goblin um, mob. Goblins in the style of sticks from uh, the video game. Master of Shadows. <laughs> Mate, I'm just streaming while I'm sculpting, so I thought I might as well I might as well stream while I'm uh while I'm doing the job anyway, do you know what I mean? It's commitment then, I've gotta I've got to see it through. I mean productivity wise I've sculpted four models in three days, so 
you know what I mean? It's all uh, it's all good for my output. And that too, yeah, that's it. What I keep finding though is because I'm I'm going till like uh, after lunch. People who are finishing streams at like lunchtime are more like it's like raiding then. It's like we had the, we had a forty-two party raid, a uh, forty-two uh, person raiding party drop in. Um, just as like, well, just after I got back after uh, having a piece of toast and a bit of soup. <laughs> so, <laughs> can't imagine if they dropped in while I just had a BRB screen. No one had stuck around for that. Yeah, I'm all up for um doing more of the old streaming lark, you know what I mean? There we go. Oh, do you know what? I need to close that gap there. That gap is a no-no. So yeah, tomorrow tomorrow's going to be an admin day, so I'm going to have a day off streaming tomorrow. I've got some admin to do, I've got a little bit of um, other stuff going on, and then I think I'm back on on Friday with a client sculpt. Right, I'll tell you, I was going to pop you guys on a BRB because I'm getting uncomfortable and needing to get a loop because I've drunk so much coffee. So give me two minutes and I'll be straight back to you, okay?
I'm back, guys. So I went in the house then, nearly uh, jumped out of my skin because I didn't even realise my wife was back in. I nearly walked into her in the kitchen. She's just about to rush out to go and pick the kids up from school. Um, So yeah, what do we what do we want for next month then? What should we uh, what should we get on? So if I follow if I follow descent into Avernus, uh, we're doing more of the Alter Realm. So we're getting more into like getting into more of the devils and the uh, that kind of thing. So the Nazugon, uh, like fallen paladin on a flaming nightmare, is on the cards. Along with a pit fiend commander, so she'll be a nice big meaty kind of. Well, yeah, basically devil troll. That's the uh, that's kind of where she's at. Um, we've got the mesoliths, I think they're called, or mesoloths. They're like the big fat sloth demons. Sloth Devils. Um, let's put some dinks and damage on this dude now. So, or I can do you a um, a goblin mob. So it depends what would be most useful to you. Well, I've got I've got lion dragons and griffins on my uh, <coughs> on my to do list. Oh, and yeah, hellhounds as well, of course. Hmm. <coughs> yeah, I can't remember what they were called. Let me see if I can find a picture of the. Um, they were a request, you see. Let me find them.
not this thing. <coughs> <coughs> so it's basically like a lion, a lion with a, a kind of elongated neck and big old dragon wings, basically. But they come in, um, they come in like a uh, like a pride. <laughs> You'd be happy with them then. So basically, we're gonna do one, one like big male one with a massive mane, and then we'll do um, a couple of female ones without the mane, who are like the more vicious hunters. So if you guys are all up for that, if you fancy it, I can do you some uh, some lion dragons next month. And I've also said as well, obviously I'm happy to do like terrain pieces, so if you want any terrain doing, I'm happy to uh, chuck a bit of terrain out your way as well. But anything I make will be, I'll have to be able to print it myself and test it. Which means any anything anything that I make terrain <laughs> terrain tracker. Do you know you say that? Have you seen the Tarask from uh, Warp Miniatures? It's awesome, man. I bet you I bet you have seen it. There's no way Alston's missed that one. Dude, oh mate, you want a you want a terrain dragon? You need this model in your life. Check that. I say it's only a dragon wearing a castle. See, don't you just need it, Elston? I love Alex at Warp Miniatures, but the one the one thing I can't I can't get my head around is how, having learned digital sculpting, he's then gone back and still carries on doing stuff um, like old school with the putty. Because like, I find it so hard work going back to putty stuff. Um, I can't like I can't even fathom it. And knowing that he can three D print and produce his models. Um, even if he wants to keep him in metal, he can still do that by just having masters made. Um, it seems hard. He must. He must just really love the the hands-on um, old school sculpting. And fair play to me for it as well. I always enjoyed it, but like I say, it was just it was just a slog, hard work. <clears throat> Yeah, he is. He's very much um, <clears throat> always strikes me as like you know that the uh, the kind of he's a proper role player, isn't he? You know, you just know like his favourite thing in the world is going to be D and D. Always seems to love his uh, costumes and props and stuff. Yeah, that's the word, thespian. <clears throat> I 
I haven't checked in on his uh, patron in a while. How's he doing on that, do you know? I think originally he was going to just do the uh, the Patreon. It was me, me that showed him how to do digital sculpting in the first first instance. I gave him a few ZBrush orientation walkthroughs and stuff just to kind of get him pointed in the right direction. And um, mate, you and me both. It's hard to keep track on what everyone else is doing, isn't it? Like I love, I love seeing what other people are doing. Like, you know, when your videos pop up in my feed, or you know, Kev's videos do, or pickles and stuff. Yeah, you know, any any of these, uh, the people I know when they like, produce videos and stuff, I love to kind of watch it. But it seems to be that the only time I ever see it is when Facebook throws it at me, or you know, I get a, a prompt when I log on to YouTube or something like that. That you know, you you put a new video out or something, and if I don't get those prompts, then I, you know, I'll, I'll miss months and months and months of content and it's uh, <clears throat> just not good enough is it? What's going on there? So you know I want to support you guys and make sure you're uh, you know I know what's going on in your worlds and stuff so Is Pickle still even producing his own content now, or is he do, is he all doing it all through um, through Luke's pages? And I thought Luke could be keeping him too busy to uh, have him releasing his own stuff. Oh, he's left, has he? That didn't last long. Is Luke too hard a taskmaster easy for him? <clears throat> oh, that's a shame. There's me thinking Luke was minted. Uh, so he's pigeonhole, pigeonholing where the money comes in then. That makes sense. And then you got to account as well for like the intangible stuff, you know. So like, again for me, doing this on stream, yeah I'm making content and whatever else, but the, um, are oh, you absolute tit. Yes, said brush, I know you abnormally terminated. Again. What's wrong with that brush, man? Looks like it crapped out on me halfway through making my scratches and dinks and dents. Oh, you 
absolute spudge rocket. We should keep a little list somewhere of all the uh, the obscenities I shout at Zbrush when it crashes on me on stream. <laughs> it's one of my favourites. That one is. Feel free to use it, whether there's a. Elston, get it into conversations again. So I, th I think I've, it was Tit, Cockwomble, and Spudge Rocket, I think, so. Badge rocket, Alston. <laughs> it's a fairly PG stream, this, until Zbrush crashes on me, I think. I think it just blows the rating. Coffee on again. I'm gonna have to get this wrapped up and uh, get it finished off because I know my nippers are coming back home in a minute. And when they get back in, I've well, got to go off to the bank. So I need to um, spend a bit of time with them, do his homework with Jacob, probably play some dollies with Willow. <clears throat> So she's proper cute at the moment. She's been um, they've been doing all the Christmas Christmas play uh, rehearsals and stuff at school. So she's um, she's gone off uh, pretty much most evenings now. And she comes in and she'll be start sit there singing. Um, what am I doing on this? So yeah, she'll be singing all her um, all her Christmas songs and stuff, and they're doing this like wiggling nativity. So she comes in and starts like putting all the wiggling nativity songs on and singing them, walking around the house while she's doing stuff. And uh, I say, she knows all the words and she's got all the tunes down and everything else. And, like little little three year old walking around the house, like singing away, just you know, oblivious to anything else, just you know, happy and content to herself. It's, Fantastic to see. <clears throat> she was really shy this this time last year. She had never have done any like that. You know what I mean? She's uh she's really kind of coming to her own a little bit now. And right, let's get this.
Oops. Okay, so I think I need to just pull that down there a touch. I need to get under his chin and just bulk out this area so it doesn't need supports under it. Call him done. <clears throat> okay, so um, um, let's put that in the correct place. It's almost in. Shut down. Copy him. Take him into this set of minis. And paste. Oops. Let's get dynamic perspective on. Let's um, get these guys positioned for a render. There we go. Let's 
just uh, mask these off. Let's do it again. Put him a little bit close. He's uh, actually got his knee on the mace, which is not a good favourable position to be in. so you can see the best of everybody. All done mate, yeah. It's got a little sculpty pass to do on the last two crossbowmen just to merge their hands in and blend them in. I was going to do a presentation render now. Uh, document, save as. Thank you very much sir. Document export even. <coughs> okay, renderings, we're going to call it the. Um, oh, what do we call it? Saracen uh, Knights of Shield. You know what I've just seen in there as well, which I'm going to show you all, because if anybody's missed this, you might want to get in there and actually grab these ready for Christmas. Um, I made last year, and I'm looking at making something new this year, but I made this last year. So it's a little bauble that hangs on your Christmas tree. Um, you obviously paint it up. The interior is done like, like, a, like a cave. There's a little socket in the bottom for a 25 mil miniature to um, a 25 mil miniature base to stand in so any kind of like standard like MDF type base like that or your plastic GW slot bases and stuff would fit fine <coughs> um, the um, LED Christmas lights there's a little hole in the top so you can poke it in so you can get internal lighting and uh, there's a couple of different flavors of them so there's a plain one which you can just have you know paint up to match your, your decor scheme there's a plain one with the cracks around the outside without the interior detailing uh, that's the one I was just showing you before we've got a smooth one and that is it I thought I did I thought I'd done them with and without this socket at the bottom but I must not have done so yes yeah, so if anybody wants one of those I've actually got one here which I've painted up Just as an example, let's pop uh, one of my minis in there. Let's see if you can see this guy. So this is done, I painted this gold first, this bauble. So I painted the bauble gold and then we did, um, after it was painted gold, I put a couple of coats of, I can't remember what it was now, the, uh, some, uh, some red paint on the outside. Uh, the contrast paint so it's got this red metallic look to it now which is quite nice and it goes with my Christmas decorations my Christmas tree is all red and gold oh it's red and white now it was red and gold uh, but inside we've got the um, again let's see if we get the light on so you can see like we've got the uh, the rock effects all painted in I've got a little bit of snow in the bottom of it for proper Christmasiness but they're available in the store as well. Um, I don't think I've put them in my store yet. Um, I'm just trying to work on a on thinning out the outer casing because this one's quite. It's got a, bit, a fair bit of weight to it. I mean, let's pop it on the scales and see what it comes up as. But so it's like 80 grams at the moment. So it's quite it's quite hefty. No, it wasn't Blood Angels red. It was. Um, it was like a. Uh, I don't even remember. I think I'll put it here. Flesh terrors, mate. Flesh terrors red. Contrast flesh terrors red, it was. I thinned it down with the contrast medium, um, gave it a couple of coats, uh, and, that was, and that was it then. 
So, um, in fact, you know what? I think I've got a proper, a proper presentation picture of that one. There we go. This this is it hanging on my tree last year. <laughs> I need to go and put it up on the tree this year, actually. You see with the Christmas light going through the uh, through the top, it's quite effective. So um, let's grab you a link to that one. As much as I hate sending you to um, my mini factory, see this. I just don't get right the. Um, there's a, a thing on the homepage of my mini factory at the moment, which is literally um, a Space Marine knockoff, and it's all over the front page of the uh, of the my mini factory site. So you'd think they might want to um, not piss off Games Workshop, you know what I mean? So you go. If anybody wants a, a bauble for Christmas. There you go, links in the Twitch chat. Right, so I can pop that in the um, thing. Let's get these guys just refined and finished. Let's um, let's dynamesh them all together. So it's 900 on the resolution. Take the polish off and just dynamesh. You said you, you said you're having to pass on the Christmas tree. I was going to get a couple of little, um, like a little mini Christmas tree for my office actually, and have a few of them down here, like display all the models on it. I need to do another, um, another Christmas decoration for this year. Really, any any ideas? Any uh, any requests or any ideas? What you'd like to see? to go with my little bauble. Definitely going to do a little Santa dwarf, I think. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that'd be a good one, wouldn't it? I bet a load of elves looking really pissed off with a a, a Santa dwarf, um, like really like looking like they're about to mutiny him and uh, crucify him because he's wearing, making him wear stripy tights. Oh, that was a funny conversation actually. I had um, I had my kids talking to me the other day about um, Santa's elves and why they weren't like the ones in D and D. Because we have the elf on the shelf come to our house to visit every year. And they were like, "Why is why is he nothing like the uh, like, like, like the D and D elves?" Like having to try and explain subspecies of elves and things like that. <laughs> it's like, you know, too inquisitive these kids. Filling in a few little pain in the ass gaps. I 
I mean, I can't even get into these gaps. So the fact I can't get into them means that no one's going to be able to get in there to see them. And if no one can get in there to see them, why well, have them? These little areas closed off, so we're not going to get any resin stuck in there, and no areas of entrapments and whatever. Oh, I've had an idea. How about how about Santa's sweatshop where he's employing gnome artifices? Why does he keep calling us elves? <laughs> the old man Sino. Last time you saw a two foot elf. I'll see if I can make it happen then. I need to uh, I need to start doing December's models a lot early, so I'm gonna do um, a couple of days next week. Um, focusing on December's stuff. So first thing I want to get done is the, the jokey one, the little Christmas the little Christmas gift. <clears throat> He is absolutely good to go. Oh, come on, is that brush? Not so shield, crossbow. No polish, dynamo should go. <clears throat> Do you reckon the gnome, the gnomes thing? It needs like a little presentation plaque with an engraving on it, then. into there and that is that is going to be a uh, a major pain in my ass when it comes to um, supports so I'm just going to fill that 
like I said, I can't get in there. Nobody's seen in there. Nobody's painted in there. It's just better all round if it's solid. Not a full diorama, just like a little mini, like a little a little stand with a few bits, and then you know, two gnomes maybe like, talking to each other and scowling at the fat man. <clears throat> maybe have Santa sat in a chair eating a mince pie or something like that while the gnomes work hard. You know, show a little bit of a uh, descent in the workforce and. The gnomes union repping or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't pay us properly. We don't get the credit. And he keeps thinking we're bloody elves. Save, save, save. Process current on that one. Yep, still got sports to do. On um, two of them though. Only on the two. Let's get him decimated first. <clears throat> and do this guy pre process. Oh shit. Pre process current. No. Fuck off. Pre broken pre process current. Decimate current. So put the ruler in, let's get the non shooty guys out of the scene. So with these guys now, 250, 251, perfect. Switch to the ruler. Evandro, thanks for the sub. Right, we're going to export to STL now. So these are in <coughs> the... There you go. So. All the supports I've done so far, they all test printed perfectly. 
no dramas. Uh, these guys, I'm sure, will be the same, but I'm going to get them supported up now, get them on the test supports. <clears throat> and then I'm going to put the products up onto my mini factory so they're ready to roll. And then it'll be on the uh, on my website later today, tomorrow. I won't try and do the uploads while you're on stream because it will lag big stop. <coughs> um, so now that they're exported, I'm going to um, drop you off on, let's see who. Let's drop you into Mike Moans because he's always good for a chuckle. So let me just uh, forward slash raid Mike Moans. I'll be doing another, I'll be doing another sculpting session for Mike Moans. Um, shortly to do the rest of this halfling character so keep your eyes peeled for that uh, Friday I'll be on I'm not having a day off tomorrow from streaming but I will be doing other stuff um, on Friday I'll be back on stream doing the Troga so just in case you're not sure what that is it is this charming looking character in the corner of the screen so this is for the Cursed Empire game uh, so that'll be that'll be Friday stream. That was so ten o'clock Friday morning. We'll be doing that disputing. So he's sculpted a base mesh already. So I just need to pose him up, uh, detail him, and add the clothing and armor bit elements, and we're good. So right now, thank you all for tuning in. Thanks for all the uh, the, the potato raiders earlier on. That was very much appreciated. Uh, right now, I'm just going to um, drop you off with Mike Moans, and you can enjoy some of his what's the word? Thespian witticisms. So tell him Dan says hello. <laughs> I'll be in the stream as well, but I'll, I'll have the kids around. So, Alright, thank you everyone, and I will catch up with you later.